The principal author of the Declaration of Independence was Thomas Jefferson, who founded the University of Virginia. 175 years later, the Cavaliers are seeking victory in the Independence Bowl. George Welsh has led Virginia to its fifth bowl in the last six years, and they boast a defensive unit that led the nation in interceptions, as well as in stopping the run. Tonight, former War Eagle Pat Sullivan brings TCU to its first bowl in 10 years. The Horn Frogs won five of their last six games behind the heroics of Andre Davis and upset Cotton Bowl-bound Texas Tech in their finale to gain tonight's Independence Burke. Although they are underdogs again tonight, another upset would fulfill TCU's pursuit of happiness. ESPN welcomes you to wet and windy Shreveport, Louisiana for the 19th annual Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl. Tonight, it's the first meeting ever on the football field between the Virginia Cavaliers and the Horned Frogs of Texas Christian University. The Cavs at 8-3, while TCU comes to its first bowl game in 10 years with a record of 7-4. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough, and it's great to have you with us. Virginia at number 19 is the highest-ranked team ever to play in the Independence Bowl, and the strength of that team is on defense. The Cavs number one in the country in stopping the run. Their opponents rush for only 64 yards a game. They also have picked it off 27 times this year. That leads the country. Cavaliers allowing just 17 points per ball game. I'm joined by Rick Walker. And, Doc, when you take a look at those numbers, if you're TCU, it's going to be tough to move the ball against this talented team. You think, ouch, how are we going to get anything done? Rick Lance took over a defensive coordinator in 1991, and his mission was to make the Cavaliers much more aggressive. Well, they went out and recruited a couple hot shot running backs and converted them to linebackers. You look at Sharp and Neal and Ferrier, these guys run 4 5, 4 6, and a 40. They get after you. Now, their front four is exceptional. Uh, Frederick Lee, that he has seven sacks. He's all ACC. And when you look at the complexity of this defense, you can understand why they have 27 interceptions. And they just cover the field sideline to sideline. Very impressed with them. And they're facing a balanced TCU attack tonight, led by the co offensive players of the year in the Southwest Conference quarterback Max Naki and running back Andre Davis. Boy, I like Naki. This guy, he is really impressive because not only does he have the big numbers, 24 tees, but only seven interceptions. And when you have a guy in the backfield like Davis who makes people miss, watch this, folks. This young man is not real big, but boy, is he nifty. He always makes the first guy miss. And when he has a sense of the end zone, there is no one that can stop him. I think we got the combinations of a good football game. It's Virginia and TCU in the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl will have the opening kickoff from Shreveport right after this. Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl is presented by Weed Eater, lawn care equipment for all your lawn and garden needs. And in part by Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. Well, you wouldn't know it was 68 degrees and sunny here yesterday, but it was. The temperature now 43 degrees. The wind whipping from left to right as you look down at the football game tonight at 30 miles per hour. And the forecast is for as much as two inches of rain in the Arklatex region tonight. And down among the elements, Dan Debenham. Oh, thank you, Sean. You know, the rain was pouring extremely hard just about an hour ago. It has been raining solid for three hours. Although, with all that in mind, the field is actually in pretty good shape. There is a big crowd on this field. Both TCU and Virginia coaches said that uh, it's draining pretty well. The problem for TCU is not so much in the elements as is their tight end. Brian Collins is their big tight end, the second leading receiver on this squad. He was questionable as to whether or not he would play in this game due to a severe, uh, severely sprained ankle. He will start in this game. If he can't go, they'll go with quick tackle Ryan Tucker. He'll move to that tight end position. He'll switch numbers as well as positions. His number will go to number 96. So look for Tucker to the outside if Collins can't go. Let's go back upstairs. And if Collins cannot play, that obviously is a big blow to TCU. Already a blow for George Welsh tonight. Rondé Barber, his outstanding freshman cornerback, the ACC Defensive Newcomer of the Year, will not play tonight with a sprained foot. George, the winningest coach at Virginia, is also the winningest coach at the Naval Academy. And across the way, Pat Sullivan in his third season as head coach at TCU. 
and the record gets steadily better. Two eight and one in his first season, four and seven last year, seven and four this year, and in a bowl game for the first time in ten years. Virginia won the toss and elected to defer. TCU will receive, and Virginia will have that wind at its back in the first quarter. The Cavaliers dressed in the white. And Brandon Nigerian, or rather Rafael Garcia, will kick off for Virginia. He's a sophomore from Danville, Virginia, that grew up in Spain, came to this country as a exchange student, as a sophomore in high school. And that wind is at the back of Garcia. Back deep to receive the kick for TCU, Jimmy Oliver. He has tremendous speed. 4-2-6 in the 40. And we're underway. Garcia, the left footer, picked it out of bounds along the near side. And TCU will get started on offense at its own 35-yard line. The offense led by Max Naki and Andre Davis, the tailback, is the leading rusher and receiver for the Horn Frogs. Brian Collins, Dan Devenham told you about his status, bothered by the ankle. They are not deep at that position. And Barrett Robbins might be the best center in the country. First team all Southwest Conference selection this year. Tonight is his 35th consecutive start for TCU. From the 35, Max Naki at quarterback, a junior from McKinney, Texas. All of the TCU starters are from the state of Texas. They tossed to Davis on the first play, and he gained three to the 38. Already some pushing and shoving. Mark Krishbaum made the tackle for Virginia. Krishbaum part of that front four, and Rick mentioned Mike Frederick. Tonight is his 47th consecutive start, a four-year starter at UVA. Jamie Sharper is the big play linebacker, leading tackler on the squad with 118 this season. And Joe Williams is in for Rondé Barber. We mentioned that Barber will not play tonight with the foot problem. And there's Williams, a redshirt freshman who made only three tackles during the regular season. Second and seven after the gain of three by Davis. It was Collins who went in motion. Naki's first pass has Oliver open and it's intercepted, but out of bounds. Out of bounds. Percy Ellsworth picked it off but couldn't stay in bounds, and the Cavaliers nearly had interception number 28. Oh, one thing I like about uh, this club and TCU is that they are aggressive. They try and out a pump and, and go to really try to stabilize and work against these young corners. Only problem was they were in a man press. And Percy gives you good range. He just couldn't keep the feet in. That'll bring up third down and seven. Ellsworth, the junior from Druryville, Virginia. He had three of those 27 interceptions. That's a pretty good point guard, too. Mm -hmm. He joins Jeff Jones' basketball squad at UVA when the football season is over. On the delay, Davis stopped short of a first down. Needed the 45, made it to the 44. And Pat Very Sullivan will punt. It was Ellsworth who made the tackle to force the punt. I think down the road, Sean, you still have to look at this as, a, as an advantage for a TCU to at least take a shot now while the field is probably in the best shape it'll be in all night. Ellsworth waiting for the punt from Bo Stevens, junior punter from Dallas. <laughs> considering kicking into the wind. It was bobbled by Ellsworth. He broke a couple of tackles and made it back to the 30. 33-yard punt, eight-yard return. And Virginia goes on offense for the first time tonight. Led by junior quarterback Mike Grove. Kevin Brooks is the leading rusher. They have three rushers with more than 500 yards this season. Patrick Jeffers from the hometown of TCU, Fort Worth, Texas, came to UVA as a walk-on. Had 33 receptions this year. Brian Heath is the only returning starter at the same position he played last year. He's the center. 
big concern for Virginia this season was the offensive line that got steadily better as the season went along. First play from scrimmage is a run and a short gain out to the 33. Royal West lines up at the guard position for TCU. He's the leading tackler among all defensive linemen for the Horn Frogs. The leading tackler of the team, Reggie Anderson. The linebacker is the strength of the TCU defense. Micaiah Martin, junior at quarterback, is the best cover defensive back for the Horn Frogs. Charles Way, the fullback, turned the corner and picked up a first down out to the 46-yard line. I check that was Kevin Brooks on the carry for UVA, and he was chased out of bounds by Mike Moulton and Micaiah Martin. 13 yards on the game, first down for George Welsh and the Virginia Cavaliers. That's a bad sign automatically for Texas Christian. They've got to be able to force a run and try to get uh, Virginia to throw the football early on. Now Grove passes to the near side. It's complete to Tiki Barber in a fine defensive play made by Lenoy Jones. The outside linebacker junior yeah, for Lenoy, TCU. He's in the mold of this new 90s linebacker. Guy, another guy runs 4-5 in the 40, comes up and makes a great tackle. You, know, you watch now a lot of kids come up and they, and they miss. If you miss a guy like Brooks or Barber, any of these great backs with the Cavaliers, you're in big trouble. So the key to that was an excellent tackle. Illinois Jones struggled early in the season with a groin injury, but over the last four games, 47 tackles. TCU played very well down the stretch. Movement in the line. There is a flag. On second and 13, a gain of a couple, but it did appear that the Horned Frogs were offside. It might have been Royal West who jumped. John Smith is the referee. John, you're going to see a little more of this, unfortunately, throughout the course of the game. TCU has got to stunt in order to be successful. And, and, and Coach Sullivan understands that in order for them to... Offsize, defense, five-yard penalty in the previous spot, we play first down. Not to stay in there and get knocked out of the box. They will have to stunt. They will have to slant. And I think uh, if they can anticipate that snap count of Mike Grove, it will definitely help them be a lot more successful. Second and eight for the walk-off against TCU. Just underway, no score. Kevin Brooks was popped as he crossed midfield, and it was Mike Moulton who knocked him down. Mike Moulton makes a stop. Moulton has a good hit. He's awfully excited now, but you want to get pumped up when you have plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. You want to be able to feel a little quicker on that. I mean, I'm sure that they'll take plays like that all night long. He's a senior from Arlington, Texas, second leading tackler on the Horn Frogs this year. Third down and four. Four minutes played here in Shreveport. That's the shovel. Patrick Jeffers went in motion. Rowe had his pass knocked down and intercepted. Picked off by Chris Pylum. Looked like Royal West got a hand on it and Pylum intercepted. Well, that's the one thing you like about defensive linemen. Even if you can't get to the quarterback, you want to elevate. Well, he really needed a shot at this. In a third down situation, UVA likes to shovel pass. They like to get the ball out to the wide. Just a simple deal trying to get the ball in Tyrone Davis's hand. He had enough distance for the first down. Ball is tipped, and that's a great reaction. Tipped by Galen Hyder, picked off by Pylon, who did not have an interception during the regular season. No score. TCU on offense after this. The Bolin Weed Eater Independence Bowl is brought to you by Isuzu, makers of incredible four-wheel drives. And by J.C. Penney, doing it right. Chris Pylon with the interception. He's a junior from Grapevine, Texas. Two-year starter at outside linebacker. He actually splits time at outside linebacker with Vincent Pryor, but he was in on the play and intercepted after the tip by Hyder. So excellent field position again for TCU. Right at the midfield stripe, first and ten for Max Naki. And they go right. 
right back to Davis. Davis tackled by Percy Ellsworth, who threw him out of bounds after a gain of four. And uh, no surprise when he hit the deck near the sideline that he ah. came away not looking quite as clean as he was when the game started. No, that's nice, though. I mean, that's the way football Tackle used to be, and I want to say ought to be. When I mean, you're out there and you get a little lather worked up, you get the mud on you, now you just got to score. You want to score before you get really dirty. Of course, one of the immediate things that Pat Sullivan did when he became the coach at TCU was install a brass field. They had played on artificial turf. He said that is a feature they use well in recruiting. Nothing there that time. Mike Frederick on defense for Virginia. Well, Michael's a stud in that. I, I do believe this is the right way to go. And Sullivan's got to continue to try to emphasize the run. He's in three wide receivers, and you hope to get some angles worked out for you. They just don't get the movement up front that's necessary. And that time, Mike Frederick shows you why he was all ACC first team. No game, third down and six for Pat Sullivan, the Heisman Trophy winner in 1971 as a quarterback at Auburn. No score. We played nearly five minutes. Deep drop. Now a man wide open. It was Collins, but the ball was underthrown. He would have had a first down inside the 35, but Naki, running gingerly on the wet field, underthrew a wide open receiver. Well, they're fortunate, number one, to have Brian Collins uh, be able to play. Suffered an ankle injury last week, and, and they were very, very worried about his abilities to come out. They had good pass protection. He's got to make that play or either take Bo off and Stevens run. To kick for TCU. Bo Stevens. In his first year at TCU as a J.C. transfer from Trinity Valley Community College. Another decent punt into the wind. Ellsworth let it bounce, and the Horn Frogs are there to down it inside the two. So going into the wind, TCU winning the battle of field position. Report before tonight's game, we talked with Virginia quarterback Mike Groh about playing in the rain. It'll be my first experience really playing in uh, bad weather, so I'm going to just, you know, try to put it out of my mind and focus on what I've got to do and not worry about the rain, because if you start worrying about rain, I think you're going to make mistakes and you're, you're going to be tentative. So I'm going to try and just block it out of my mind and play I think it's a 100 degree day. He'd also like to be able to block out the field position, but he can't. They're backed up at their own two. And the first man is the fullback way, trying to get some breathing room for the offense he powered out near the five yard line officially a gain of two Mike Grow, son of a coach his dad Al Grow, former head coach at Wake Forest in the ACC and now the defensive coordinator of the surging New England Patriots yeah he's a happy camper at this point Pat's on a big time roll Mike the leader in passing efficiency in the ACC this year the 13th in the nation Charles Way was tackled by Reggie Anderson, short of a first down. And let's check in with Dan. Yeah, thanks, John. You know, you mentioned that Mike really hasn't ever played in the rain before. In fact, he has never played a collegiate game in the rain before. He doesn't really have to worry about it now because the rain has virtually stopped. Lightly misting, if you will. So Mike Rowe doesn't have to worry about the rain, but he does have to worry about the TCU game. On third and two, they did not get it. Brooks stopped at the line of scrimmage. Hayes Rydell came away from the bottom of the pile for TCU. Yeah, they're getting off the ball. Again, the key is you got to get off the ball quick. They're slanting up front, and the linebackers are feeling this is picture perfect. This is how you draw it up. And it's the one thing that I think everybody was concerned about. Pat Henderson, the defensive coordinator, told us yesterday that they definitely had to be able to get in lanes, get good shoulder pad placement and be very aggressive up front. So far, so good. Will Bryce on the punt. He's a sophomore from Lancaster, South Carolina. Great punt coverage team, John. And a fine punt with the wind at his back. And it's misplayed. And John Washington able to fall on it, but it's all the way back at the 34-yard line. Will Bryce, who had a 78-yard punt earlier this season, third longest in school history, sent that one 51 yards with no return. And that's been 
a key all season oh, long. The punt returners against Virginia this year have averaged 1.6 yards per return, and that's the best punt coverage team in the country. He's only had 11 returns. I mean, the guy is, uh, he's Bigfoot. First and 10 TCU at the 34-yard line. Well, TCU has started at 35 at midfield, and now at its 34. Andre Davis, the lone back lined up behind Max Naki. No score nearly midway through the first quarter. Moving along the right end of the line, Dwayne Ashton was offside for Virginia. Pass complete to Andre Davis. Davis went out of bounds with a gain of four, but it appeared the penalty was against Virginia and will be accepted by TCU. Penalty against Virginia. This is great. Give the quarterback all the credit in the world. It gets Dwayne Ashman to jump, and sometimes you change that voice flexion. You give it a strong double hut, and you can get him off. Replay first down. Dwayne Ashman, they think he has the talent to be a standout. He's just a sophomore. They would like him to work a little bit harder in practice, say the coaches. Well, he's got seven sacks and a tremendous amount of talent. One of those guys that I think before he leaves would be an All-American if he pays the price. First and five now for TCU. Made it to a bowl game by winning five of the last six in the regular season, including a win over Texas Tech. Cotton Bowl bound in the season finale. Coy Woods, the fullback, got the call. He's a sophomore from Bowling, Texas. And he's very close to a first down. They'll measure with the ball at the bottom of the 44. You know, one thing you can always tell is when a guy jumps off sides, watch Ashman at the bottom of your screen. He'll come in and get in on this play. When you have a bad play, you always want to follow it with a good one. Because you know come Monday film studies, the coach is going to be all over you, and you want to make that short Eight term. Four, measure for the first down. Ashman did not qualify academically out of high school. He would have had to be a Proposition 48 player. The ACC does not allow Prop 48 players. They're inches short of the first down. So he went off to Fork Union Military Academy. His family thought he had gotten in with a bad crowd. He got his act together in the military academy environment, got his grades up, and decided to come to the University of Virginia, one of the premier institutions in the country. Oh, it helped him, helped him a great deal. Tyrone Davis also attended Fourth Union, and uh, you know he'll graduate. So it's a good story. It really is. But that young man, if he could just get some idea of what kind of talent he has, I'm sure he'll make all the folks uh, at home very happy. Out of Silver Spring, Maryland. Inches short. Many times, this is considered a free play for the offense, but Pat Sullivan likes first downs. Quarterback keeper for Naki, and he picked it up out to the 45. Carry Max Naki this Nucky. year, 24 Game touchdown over. passes down and TCU. only seven interceptions. And the offensive coordinator, Pete Hayner, told us yesterday the big reason why the team is so improved this year is that Naki was their most improved player. Last year, he had 12 touchdown passes and 14 INT, so he doubled his touchdown passes this year and cut in half his interceptions. Passed for a school record, 2,624 yards. The delay. Davis bounced off a couple of hits, crossed midfield, down at the 49. The eight of six. Again, it was Percy Ellsworth. He's been in a lot of tackles, and that's not a good sign for Virginia when the safety is making virtually every play. No, it isn't, but when you got those great linebackers, I think play action is good. You get them to drop, and you get good line surge up front. Here's a guy that makes people miss. Good low center of gravity. I like this kid. He's got to get the mud out of his face, yes. though, but if he manages to do that, I think he'll be okay. Five carries for Davis, 19 yards, no score, six and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Reflected at the line of scrimmage. Looked like John Harris at six foot eight got a hand on it. Yeah, he's got a couple block kicks. We watched Brian Collins, who means so much to this offense, had 32 catches, second on the team, and he's uh, really missed a lot of practice. They were very concerned about whether or not he would get a chance to play. With him in, it really gives him a chance to do some great things offensively. Naki is 0 for 4 passing. Coming 
coming up from the secondary, Sam McIver, to put the hit on Coy Woods. And he came up about a yard short, and TCU will punt. TCU is trying to do some things. I, I still like what's happening. You're trying to run the football. You've got to do that. You need a little more movement by Collins. But the Cavaliers don't come into this game leading the nation versus the run without being pretty good. Oh, Stevens, his last punt was down at the two. And again, Ellsworth let it bounce. I think given this win, Ellsworth's playing too deep. That's a couple of times he couldn't field a punt, and TCU benefited from the roll. 33-yard punt back after this. 34 yards on the punt. Here in the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl, thrifty car rental bowl week continues tomorrow night. It's the Weiserlock Copper Bowl, Oklahoma, in the last game for Gary Gibbs, his coach, taking on number 21, BYU. That's at 8 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. We know it's Gary Gibbs' last game. We don't know it's going to be the last game at BYU for quarterback John Wall. There's been conflicting reports about whether or not he intends to enter the NFL draft. A lot of money on the line. Virginia begins at its own 12. Charles Way, tackled by Reggie Anderson. Way carried out near the 15-yard line. He's a senior from Philadelphia and a civil engineering major at UVA. Carried by number 30, Charles Way. And that means carrying quite a class down. load. Yes. That man said originally he wanted to go to Syracuse and was told that he would not be able to do both. So he made it out to Wahoo. <laughs> He's one of the three captains on the team, along with Randy Neal and Mike Frederick. Brooks broke through and has a Virginia first down at the 27-yard line, a gain of 11 for the junior from Chesapeake, Virginia. Well, you know, you know when an offense really needs a big play, I knew somewhere that Charles Way would be in his 30, gets a nice block at the point of attack, and this is some good hard running. The Cavaliers are a little stunned right now. Space TCU is taking it to them defensively. I mean, to beat them at the punch. Play action pass for Groh. Has a man open. Patrick Jeffers. And the Fort Worth native took it down to the 34-yard line of TCU. A gain of 39. Patrick Jeffers. What a great story. Tyrone Davis goes out the last couple weeks. This young man steps in and makes great production. So you got to have a misdirection. This is a dash play to get away from that fierce pass rush. And Jeffers comes back. You got to come back to a ball in a bad rain day. Makes the grab, watching in the offensive line. See, the misdirection frees the linebackers. It takes a little talent to kind of work that route out. But he comes back, secures the football, puts the Cavaliers in good shape. So completed that pass to his roommate, Jeffers. And another big ball. Bursting through Charles Way. Down to the 23. 12 more for Virginia. Manville hopes and Jeff Stevens, the safeties, made the tackle. I like this guy. He's Jeff a captain, Stevens as you mentioned. He is definitely their leader. His 40th straight game as a Cavalier. Kevin Brooks starts off with the big run. Then you get a pass from Mike Rowe, and now you get your fullback involved. Way, honorable mention, all ACC. This season, 54 rushing yards now for Virginia. They're at the 23 of TCU. No score, 350 left in the opening quarter. Again, play action. And open, incomplete. Looking again for Jeffers. And the ball was a little bit short. A little short. McWilliams, pretty good coverage on that. Cavaliers, you see, they want to hit. They want to hit quick. I like to see you just pound the ball and, and see if you can really establish that line of scrimmage. Jeffers came to UVA as a walk-on. Was not highly recruited coming out of Fort Worth Country Day School. As a matter of fact, TCU, his hometown university, never even contacted him. The word apparently got around that he's slow. And he's anything but slow. As above average speed. Yeah, but how do you? How are you slow? This guy runs uh, the 400 meters in high school and never lost a race. Maybe the competition was carried by Brooks. So Jeffers took only one Division I visit. That was to Auburn, and that was really as a courtesy because his parents were Auburn graduates. He was all set to go to Princeton, but his sister Allison was a student at the University of Virginia and was dating Derek Dooley, a wide receiver, himself a former walk-on. Derek, the son of former Georgia coach Vince Dooley, 
and Derek convinced Patrick to come to UVA as a walk-on. And now Derek Dooley and Pat Jeffers' sister Allison are engaged. <laughs> it worked out well for everyone. On third and long, flags down, thrown out in the flat and caught after a juggling act by Kevin Brooks. Pass complete to Kevin Brooks. Well Brooks short of a first down, the but there is a flag at the line of scrimmage. It was Chuck McWilliams, the cornerback, who made the play. Illegal motion against Virginia. against Virginia. And it takes real courage to catch a tip ball and keep, it, keep your eyes on it. Well, Pat Sullivan has a decision to make here. If he declines it to be fourth down and a likely field goal try, if he takes it, it could push them back no, out I, of I, field I goal range. I get the ball. I don't know. I get the ball out of their hands at this point. Yeah, I think on a wet field like this, you might let them try a field goal of 36 or 37 yeah. no, yards I agree. and turn down the penalty. Yeah, I agree. And after a lot of conversation, that's what they're doing. Illegal motion. Offense. The penalty has been declared. Fourth down. To listen. I like it when coaches listen to us. Yeah, that, you think he's tuning in the broadcast Gotta on the headset? Got to be. All the latest technology? Sure he is. Pat Sullivan, 44 years old, Virginia Southwest Conference Coach of the Year this year. And very deserving winner of that honor. A lot of concern in the Fort Worth area that he was leaving to become the head coach at LSU. But for reasons that have been well chronicled, it didn't work out that way. The kick from Garcia is wide left. Reports were that Sullivan was offered the job at LSU but there was a buyout clause and LSU didn't want to buy out his TCU contract for several hundred thousand dollars. And Sullivan wound up staying at TCU and just last week signed a long-term extension. He said it wasn't a distraction to his team. If anything, it brought more attention to the TCU program and brought them closer together. No, it does. I mean, I, I can tell you, I've you know, been in a high-profile college program and your coach leaves Dick Vermeil, left UCLA to go to the Eagles. When I was there, Terry Donahue stepped up to the magnificent job and still doing a great job. But it is a feeling like, wait a minute. And all of a sudden, thank God, Terry was a part of our staff and it really helped. So after the missed 36-yard field goal by Rafael Garcia, still no score, 2.37 left in the opening quarter. From the 21st and 10, Naki throws short and incomplete. Here's Dan Rookies Debenham. Four, six, Thanks, John. You know, I feel like a meteorologist down here. I feel like I should be telling you that the storm has now moved back into the area, and it is really gusting now, and believe me, it is. So you really can't second-guess Virginia because they were with the wind. The wind was gusting right through these uprights. Rafael Garcia is just a little bit short, but the big news is it is raining hard and gusting. What happened to your umbrella? Yeah, Dan, where's your hat? Where's your galoshes? Guys, it's good. Second and ten, back to the ground, Davis, submarine at the 24. Carl Smith up from his safety spot, Davis. the senior from Richmond. Number 47, Carl Smith with the tackle. He was, I don't mention all ACC this year, and won UVA's John Polder Award for ability, sportsmanship, and character. He's playing in his last game for Virginia tonight. Oh, he's tough. He's a former cornerback, moved down to the safety spot, led all of the secondary you know, with tackle, so he's a tough guy, and I think he's got a good future. Third and seven. Naki still has not completed a pass. Another deep drop. Screen over the middle, knocked down and nearly picked off by Eddie Robertson. Back up defensive end, junior from High Point, North Carolina, who got his hands on it, but couldn't pull it in. Eddie's had two real good plays. Prior to that, he forced them out of the pocket on the screen. Here he keeps pretty good, but then he's blocked there, and he kind of drops back in the pass defense and gets lucky. Christmas was Sunday. This guy gets blocked, he gets pushed back, and almost makes a great play. So fourth possession for TCU, and this is the fourth punt. And the field position is shifting in Virginia's favor now. That punt by Stevens into the win. Out of bounds at the 41-yard line, just a 20-yard punt. Punt goes out of bounds at the 42-yard line. The thing I like about a good defense is that you keep gnawing on people. Virginia makes their living putting pressure on you. See, these are the little things. When you don't get it called, then uh, Mark Christbaum can kind of give you a little shove. Quarterbacks don't like to hit the turf. They don't like to have their feathers ruffled. So anytime you get a shot at it, you take it. And TCU's 22-yard line. Naki said TCU records this season for touchdown passes, passing yardage in a season. 
and in a career. They had some tremendous quarterbacks at that school, including Sammy Bond, Davey O'Brien. Grow dumps it short. Gain to the 38-yard line, caught by Patrick Jeffers again. Gain of four. That's complete to Jeffers. Doesn't remind you of the old days when you go out, went out to the park and just played in the rain. <laughs> Those sidelines are brutal. You really need people to help you and to keep you up. Because you could you could hurt yourself on the sideline. Second and six. Sitting down to one minute left at the opening quarter. Still no score. Kevin Brooks crossed the 35 before he was knocked down by Chuck McWilliams. McWilliams and Hopes on the tackle. 7 carries 36 yards now for Brooks. That offensive line is really starting I think to get a little momentum feel better about itself. They were a little embarrassed a little early on. These guys have these people I think can play on the next level. Third down and two. Charles Way. Carried by Charles Way. Got Close nothing. to a first down, but I don't think he got it either. Royal West beat him to the punch. Charles is just a just an outstanding individual. Tough guy. I, I really think he's there. If not most valuable player, unsung hero. Does everything for him. The end of the quarter. When we come back, it'll be fourth and less than a yard for UVA. After one in the Independence Bowl. No score. In Shreveport, Louisiana for the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl. No score after a quarter. First play of the second quarter, fourth and less than a yard. Virginia goes for it. And with the second effort, Charles Way appeared to pick it up. He was hit right at the line of scrimmage, but bounced ahead. Reggie Anderson doesn't think that he made Charles it. Way, uh, pretty West. certain the officials will not concur. And a it first is a first down for the Cavs. Way rushed for 517 yards this season, most by a UVA fullback in 10 years. Well, he had three backs over 500 yards and still don't get great penetration. I mean, the Frogs really did a good job of that. They just didn't stop him. From the 31 of TCU. Another play fake. And Rose on target. To the tight end, Bobby Neely, the junior from Atlanta, his first reception of the game, and in game five. Now, this is the same similar first pass complete to number 88. They Bobby had on a Neely. successful play so far to Patrick Jeffers. It worked out good for him. I like the way Mike fakes. I mean, he does. He carries things out very well, takes a little hit. See, I told you, those defensive linemen always like to get a hit, a kiss on the quarterback, and this is good. Make the grab and try to work for an additional yardage. Rick LaFavors made the stop for TCU. To give to Way. And he's close to a first down. At the 22. Appears to be about a yard short. That yardage for Way this year, the most for a fullback at UVA. Steve Morris at 529 back in 1984. You mentioned the three 500 yard rushers, Brooks, Way, and Tiki Barber. All went over 500 yards rushing. Game Coach Welch this season. For a long one. for four on third down are the Cavaliers and now they're successful on the fifth try Carried by the quarterback Mike, Mike Grow down to the 20 to move the chain that's the play you run though Sean when you got Brian Heath in front of your center Gain of two and another Cavalier first down. strongest down in offensive line watch him tee off that's what happens when you pay the price in the weight room 65 white benches over 400 465 pounds 560 on the squats and Heath man he's a stud this guy been lifting weights since he was in the eighth grade. Strongest player in the program. Oh, yeah. This is 465, squats 560. Bro, nearly slipped 
Fake after the fake. He's in trouble. Finally goes down. Back at the 25-yard line. Loss of five. Hayes Rydell near his toe and helped grow to the ground. Yeah, they went after that maybe just one time too many. This is an action that has worked well for him. A nice waggle action. He tries to set up his slip. But I think TCU just played that one pretty well. Good hustle. They are very active up front. Not real big in the front seven. John, but very active. Get off blocks well. They've impressed him. Mike Groh, a career backup prior to this year. Simeon Willis was the returning starter at quarterback, but with injuries early in the season. Groh got a chance, and he was the starter down the stretch. Charles Way back to the 23-yard line, setting up third down and long. They'll need more than 10 to move the chains right. again. By Charles Way. Agostino, big Jason, that time pulling, Anderson, getting up in the, in the hole very well. Slocum, Heath. These guys are very good. Watch him pull on this. He comes out, and this, this offensive line, they're big guys, but they can roll. Reminds me of the old counter trade. They fill space well, get good flush hits, and create scenes for the back. Third down and 13. No score. Played nearly three minutes in the second quarter. Throw hit as he threw on target. First down. Patrick Jeffers inside the 10. Tackled at the six-yard line. Gain of 18 on third and 13 for the Wahoos. That is a big league reception. In this kind of weather condition, when you can go up and catch the ball flush with the hand, that is major league. Once again, Mike Groh shows some guts. He steps up in the pocket. You know you're going to get hit. And again, those linemen, they love this Royal West, putting you down. That's super. And that, that catch there, that gets you on Sports Center. Already 60 yards in receptions for Jeffers on three catches. Movement. And the Horned Frogs indicating they were drawn across the line. And they think uh, Chris Harrison jumped a little bit. Dead ball, full star, offense. Five yard penalty, we play first down. 61-year-old George Welsh said a few years ago he only wanted to coach till he was 60. Says he's still enjoying it. He thought at age 60 he'd go into another profession. Wasn't quite sure what it would be, but thought he'd like to do something different. He's still enjoying coaching, and he plans to be at UVA a long time. The football man, and there are a lot of moms and dads that don't want him to leave Virginia. You better believe that. He had not been to a bowl game before he arrived. Back the penalty yardage and more. He gained eight down to the three, setting up second and goal. So it doesn't take a lot of smarts to know if you're a fullback. I want to follow 69 to 77. These two big hunks getting in the line, a good flush hit on the middle linebacker, and all you got to do is just hug them. Hug those hips, man, and run for daylight. Way coming off a big performance in the regular season finale against NC State, rushed for 132 yards. This is the 12th play of the drive. And Way won't add much to his yardage total of that carry. Now he won't because Reggie Anderson brought the mallet with him. That was a sludge hammer field. Yeah, I just love linebackers when they get inside and they crunch, they're backed up to their own end zone and they will feel with authority. You watch the right side of you. Oh, you feel the, the blockers are coming down. He steps up and delivers the blow. Keeps the feet going. That's picture perfect. Anderson, second team all-conference for the second straight year. Third and goal from the two. Bro looking to throw. End zone incomplete. Looking for Bobby Neely, the tight end. Now it's fourth and goal from the two. Now you're looking at bad wind conditions. You've got to get some confidence in Garcia. Here's a young man that led the ACC in scoring, and you've got to get a good one out, especially early on. You can always make up for it if you miss now. Garcia missed in the first quarter from 36 with the win. Win shouldn't be a factor from this distance. It's a 20-yarder. Tim Sherman, backup quarterback, is the holder. 20-yard field goal is good. And Virginia is on the board. Early in the second quarter, the Cavaliers lead three to nothing. Virginia three, Texas Christian nothing. 
11 yards. So Virginia begins in good First field Virginia position Virginia. at its own 38, working with a 3 nothing lead. Yeah, he possession. made a great catch. He made a great catch. Yes, he did. But the punt wasn't very good. Last possession, Virginia went 40 yards to set up the field goal in 14 plays and took 6-17 off the clock. That was Tiki Barber who rotated at the tailback to spell Brooks, the number one of the 500-yard-plus rushers this year. And a twin brother of Ron Day Barber, the outstanding redshirt freshman defensive back who was unable to play tonight with a sprained foot injury suffered in practice over the weekend. Good to see him in there. He had a fractured shoulder against uh, Virginia Tech. Bro, good face. Going deep down the middle, incomplete. Looking for Tyrone Davis, the leading receiver for Virginia this season with 38. He's been bothered by turf toe in recent weeks. He was open, and the pass from Bro just missed. Well, you got to grit it up. Chris Pilon on this one because he comes in, puts pressure right in Mike's face, right about there. And I think as a quarterback, he kind of senses it's happening, and he kind of pulls it just a bit. Then his size on these Virginia receivers: Davis, 6'5", 225; Jeffers, 6'4", 214. And they can run. These guys run downfield. Third and seven. stop the play they took too long to get it off dead ball the layup game offense let's check in with Dan Debenham well thanks Sean we were just talking about Tiki Barber you mentioned that Ronde his twin brother isn't able to play in this game but you know what those two Boston sure like to have fun with the fact that they are identical twins in fact when they were back in uh, spring practice, they actually tried to play a little practical joke on the coaches. They tried to switch up in meetings. Rondé, the defensive player, went into the offensive meetings. Tiki went into the defensive meetings. The only one that uh, found out the problem was George Welsh, who said, the head coach said, hey, you know, the only way I can tell the difference between these two is that they play different, they wear different colored practice jerseys. So, hey, these guys like to have fun with Coach Welsh. Carried by Groh, kept it on third and 12 and got six. Galen Hyder chased him out of bounds. It's a big move for Hyder. And you can get the quarterback money. Now we're really talking bonus now. I guarantee you he hates this. He's got to make sure that those hands, he's got to change the, uh, the wristbands the whole bit. He's a guy that's got to have dry hands. Will Bryce, his first punt with the win, went 50 yards. This one's into the win. John Washington back to field the punt. Three nothing Virginia midway through the second quarter. It was nearly blocked. And Bryce has never had a punt blocked with 103 career punts. That was oh so close. Looked like Lenoy Jones is there. John, he should have blocked that one. 29 yard punt and no return. 30 yards on the punt. Let's hope to no return. Right? Manvel hopes. Oh boy, almost got it. We'll return to the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl right after this. Field in a gain of 17, but the flag was down at the line of scrimmage. Offsides, defense, the penalties are gone. First down. Can we watch the top right of your screen again? I'd be asking again. Yes, it is. He jumped, you know, trying to get a break. Then he gets blown out. And then the rest is just a good back. Davis shows you why. They're not intimidated by the Cavaliers. He's only the second running back in history to rush for over, over 100 yards against Texas A&M rather in the last 10 years. Right. And I mean, that's saying a heck of a lot. They've gone up against Rice when Rice is really good defensively. So they can get it done. Davis at 325 yards in a game this year against New Mexico. That was just the second first down for TCU. Percy Ellsworth made the tackle on Davis, Davis and we check in with Dan Debenham. Thanks again, Sean. You know, we've talked about the gutsy performance by Brian Collins, TCU's tight end. And he's playing with that severely sprained ankle. This is one of the reasons why he's doing such a fine job right now. This is called Vet Wrap. It was actually uh, made eight. for horses. It's an equine wrap. It, it's virtually indestructible in any kind of wet weather. They are wrapping him with this, and he's playing mighty well right now considering his injury. Well, he ought to send him a thank you card because so far 
he, he's definitely been in there doing a good job. Second and seven. Davis. Into Virginia territory. Gain of two. Marked down at the 48-yard line. Skeet Jones, a backup linebacker, who the coaches call really a fourth starter, made the play. 11 carries, 50 Andre yards Davis. now for six, Andre Davis. Davis. Skeet should get a lot of time next year. He's played now in 34 Gain straight two, games for the Cavaliers. Six. And, you know, Virginia and all the great uh, defenses that don't like to be run on, they get mad. You see them out there complaining now about people holding them, and they're starting to get frustrated. 3-0 Virginia. 5-20 left in the first half. Cavs are showing blitz and then drop back. Four-man rush. Naki incomplete. Almost had the completion of Davis, who dropped it. Flag thrown where you'd expect holding against TCU. It was. Mike Frederick, he was horse-tied. He really was. Well, if they turn it down, it'll be fourth down and six. But Casey, running back coach, uh, he's coached some good ones. Bo Jackson and company. And the uh, sideline for Virginia hasn't decided. Finally, Mike Frederick says, we'll turn it down, Mr. Referee. Holding office. The penalty has been declined. Fourth down. And six yards to go. Used to climb. We'll bring up the fourth down. Yeah, kills a great drive. Kills a great drive for TCU. But Mike Frederick, seven sacks, all ACC first team, what do you do? TCU. Either double team him or take the rip, the consequences. Percy Ellsworth back to the having for trouble punting with the win here in the second quarter. He fared better into the win in the first quarter. Ellsworth let it bounce into the end zone. The Independence Bowl record for punts in a game by one punter is nine. And, the and that was the, the sixth for Stevens already. Terry McFarland of McNeese State had nine punts in 1976. Be sure to be with ESPN Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern for the wild card edition of NFL Game Day. Chris Berman, Joe Theismann, Tom Jackson, Chris Mortensen, and Bill Sims provide the best previews of the wild card games. Then at 7.30, it's prime time for all the highlights and analysis of both games. Then on Sunday, back to noon Eastern for Game Day as they preview the remaining two wild cards and 7.30 for primetime for the complete wrap. Big weekend in the NFL with the playoffs getting underway. Kevin Brooks. I got the wall. I got the wall. All the way to the 28-yard line of TCU. 62 yards, no flags. Boy, Brooks makes it happen. Now watch, watch the fullback again. I'm in love with this guy. Charles Way, unsung hero, knocks people out of the box. Fullback comes in, gets a good collision, is able to open it up. I mean, that is stealing there. Brooks ought to take him out, buy him a double cheeseburger, milkshake, and the whole bit. I mean, that is a jailbreak. Previous long run of 21 yards, so he shattered that one. That was 62. 98 yards rushing now for Brooks. This is Way. And the Virginia offense is starting to kick it into gear. That's inside the 20, and about a yard and a half shy of another first down. Yeah, That's when you Charles say thank Lane. you. Tom O'Brien, the offensive Tom coordinator, Lane. you go out and do a great job, you get a good block, they reward you, let you run the football. Gain of eight, second and two. The defensive coordinator for TCU, Pat Henderson, was a little bit concerned about the size advantage that Virginia has up front when Virginia is on offense and they have been doing a pretty good job of pounding it at the Frogs. Yeah, but the Frogs were very, very nice early on. And they, I think they stopped them. The stunting uh, really hurt the Cavaliers and I was surprised at that. Virginia's not been able to sustain anything though. They get a couple of good, good plays and they have a bad play. We are not sure of the reason for the stop and play. Now the officials are ready to go. Second down, a long one. Three nothing, Virginia. The Cavs on the move again. Delayed away, and he's down close to the ten yard line with another first down. Carried by Charles Way.
gain of nine and a first down for Virginia. First and ten, they can't pick up another first down just first inside the one just yard, inside line. The 11 yard line. The offensive line is just taking charge now. Three 500 yard rushes. First team to do it in ten years in the ACC. Charles Way. Ruled down at the six yard line. DCU partisans didn't like it as they thought they were going to get the ball back, but he was down by contact at the six. And he was down. Watch center of your screen. You, you talk about surge on the offensive line. That is movement. You got a good double team of tag block there. Second down and five. You got Deary who, Deary who misses his block. He is obviously down. But he, the right Slocum, there. and Rally Agostino, these guys have started to dominate. Way again. Way touchdown. Touchdown, Virginia. Get out of their huddle. Six yard run. First touchdown of the night. He had six rushing touchdowns during the regular season. Five of those came in the last three games. Garcia to attempt the extra point. He was perfect in PATs this year. 34 for 34. And he's still perfect. 80 yards. Five plays. This drive took. Two minutes and 18 seconds, and it culminates in a touchdown. The Cavaliers up 10 to nothing. Uh, Chris Harrison on the onside, outstanding offensive lineman. He he develops the block. He makes it happen. Gives them the wedge. The two big fellas, Rally and Agostino, they pull in, and all you got to do is just walk the dog behind them. I mean, they have really started to control this football game now. I like it when they start to pound people. I could sense that you were enjoying. It. Yeah. I like it. That trend. All of it on the ground. Of course, the big run. 62 yards by Brooks. And got them deep into TCU territory. Now TCU has to try to find a way to move the football and have Max Naki complete a few passes. Coming up, our halftime report with Mike Chirico, Lee Corso, and Craig James. A preview of the Orange Bowl. We'll have news from the Rose Bowl and the Bowl Blitz. That's in two minutes and 46 seconds. Charles Way, the touchdown. Senior from Philadelphia. This is the three 500-yard rushers. First ACC team in 10 years to do it. Maryland and Virginia both did it 10 years ago. Garcia to kick for Virginia. Garcia to kick off. Came to this country from Barcelona, Spain, as a sophomore in high school to Danville, Virginia, with the expectation he'd stay one year. Liked it so much, he stayed three years. His host family in Virginia became his legal guardian. And now he's the field goal kicker at UVA. Return to the 25-yard line by Chris Kick Brassfield. Return, Chris Brassfield. Eight yards Seven on the return. return. He was tackled by Joe Aben, the backup tight end, who is congratulated in then from as he comes to the near sideline. Joe Aben, a DeMatha man. DeMatha High School out of Hyattsville produced a lot of football players around the country. Max Naki, leading passer of the Southwest Conference this year, still looking for his First completion with 2.39 left in the half. Naki, there's a completion on a great catch by Collins. And he's out to the 38-yard line. 13 on the first completion for TCU. Well, that's worth a couple of more looks. Now, that's just great individual effort. Now, he may have hurt himself a little on that. Number 86, As the McCarthy. Frogs can create something in their passing game, their running game will pick up. See, it probably hurt him on the pivot. He's held and still makes a great catch. Man, that is outstanding. First down, Back 
to Davis on the draw. Avoided the tackler in the backfield and turned it into a gain out to the 46-yard line. Percy Ellsworth brought him down after a gain of seven. He's a special young man. He really is. The average back goes down under those circumstances. And they're at the point now where the Horn Frogs have definitely got to fight Game back. Second. They cannot afford Game to fall any further down three. in the score. And you got to just drop the guts and go at it. 12 carries, 56 yards for Davis. Down a minute 40 left in the half. Whistles. It wasn't for too much time because two seconds remained on the play clock as the ball was snapped. Flag on the play. Dead, Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Just Five when the yard penalty. Were beginning to move the ball down. crisply, they hurt themselves with a penalty. Yeah, they, they just can't afford to do this. You know we're near the panic at this point, but you do need to get some good results. Five-yard penalty will make it second and eight from the 40-yard line. Ball marked back at the 40-yard line. Minute 20 left in the half. You understand that it might be tough for you at home to figure out the time remaining with the scoreboard clock that you are seeing. It looks like somebody took a weed eater to some of those bulbs. Over the middle and incomplete. Intended for John Washington. It was Ellsworth who had the coverage and Donkey's he's been all over the, the, the field John here in the first half. DCU complete. has not been shut out in a first half this season, but they're a minute and eight seconds away from being blanked in the first 30 minutes here. And yeah, that, that's good. Now, now, what time is that, Sean? You're a it's a um, minute and eight. What? Minute and eight seconds left. That's, okay. that's pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, they took a pole and weed eater to that scoreboard. I was a little disappointed. I thought we might get a weed eater when we came here to do the weed eater. You ball. didn't get yours? I got one. Did you? Yeah. You didn't get one? No. No. I look forward to going home and... That's great. Eating up those weeds. Third and eight. Naki looking for a lot more than eight. And it is incomplete. Nearly a terrific diving catch by Jason Tucker, a true freshman from Robinson, Texas. And it was off his fingertips near the 10-yard line. Oh, that would have been the biggest catch of his career. It would have been number nine for him. That's the kind of play they needed. The one thing about it is that Mike Frederick and the rest of this Cavalier defensive line has put great pressure on the quarterback. This is one of the reasons that his timing has been disrupted. Now watch the stretch. See, he gets there. And the great ones make that catch. Time out on the field. And there is an injured player on the field for Virginia. Here's Dan Debenham. Well, once again, as you can see, the heavens have opened up and it is pouring with just over a minute left before they will take to the locker room. Let me quickly tell you that that was obviously the best effort put forth by the TCU offense. One of the reasons why, just before they took the field, the offensive line got together and I heard them saying that they did indeed need their own gut check, as Rick, you were saying before. They said, stay low, surge off the ball. They might be having some problems with their footing on this wet field. Thank you, Dan. I think Sam McIver just had the wind knocked out of him as he Bo came Stevens off to for TCU. the field running. Here's Bo Stevens, seven possessions, seven punts now for TCU, and Ellsworth will battle the raindrops to try to field it. And Virginia has called a timeout. They had 12 men on the field. Back in a moment. Sean McDonough with Rick Walker, Dan Debenham, back in Shreveport in the pouring rain. With a minute left in the half, Stevens. Ellsworth lets it bounce, and again, TCU will down it inside the 10. And they do have all three timeouts at their disposal. 53-yard punt. I think they want to get in at halftime. Change the few yards needs, on the punt, no try to drive and come out and, and, and try to finish the work. I think TCU here may want to use their timeouts if they can stop Virginia and force a punt on these sloppy Ball conditions, maybe go after a punt well, to close. get a spark. I mean, they were very close. Mm -hmm. They had an opportunity to block one. Uh, Hopes was right there. He just missed the ball early on. Seven punts, only two from the Independence Bowl record. We doubt that Terry McFarland of McNeese State 
<laughs> and all nine of those punts in the first half in 1976. Still only down 10 zip. They uh, did not move the chains. And uh, those fellas got the message and have reported a duty at the seven yard line. 47 seconds left. Virginia with two timeouts left after using the timeout of the punt. The TCU, as we mentioned, has all three movement. And again, the Frogs say they were drawn off by the right end of the I think Virginia it's line. Move. Dead ball, ball start, offense. At the distance, but goal penalty, still first down. So you could have a fumble now and, and they can score. The That's the, the tough part about being inside uh, your own red area. You, you hate to do that. You want to get some root. One bad handoff, exchange, anything. You could be in big trouble. First and 13 at the three-yard line. Way in front of Brooks in the eye, Grow. TCU stuffs him. And they use the first timeout with 42 seconds left. Carry by Grow. We remind you, coming up at halftime, we head to Miami. Two. Tough assignment for Mike. Oh, Chris. man. Are you kidding me? Craig Lee, the guys that are going to be in Miami. They, I think they've oh. been there for about a month, too. Yeah, I bet they hate the life. We'll join Mike Lee and Craig for the halftime report. Preview of the Orange Bowl, news from the Rose Bowl, the Bowl Blitz. And uh, the Bowl Blitz here on ESPN this week is underway with this game tonight. The action last night. And you're heading off for the Alamo Bowl. Yep, Alamo Bowl, uh, Saturday night. I kind of wish we were, I had an open booth. Though. We need to be more exposed in this element. I, I feel like, I feel better about being involved in this. Speak for yourself. <laughs> this is a good night to be a horned frog. We don't know if they uh, thrive in wet conditions. That is a big horned frog. I like to bring that guy in with me in an all-you-can-eat food joint. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I walk in and then I have him walk behind me. I bet on you, though. You what? Mm -hmm. So it'll be second down now. And 11 from the five-yard line. Yeah, he has definitely been the workhorse for the Cavaliers. Talking about Charles Way, who gets the handoff. And TCU quickly stops the clock again with 35 seconds Way. left in the half. And Tackle Virginia looking 51, at Scott third Scott. down and nearly 10. We mentioned the string of bowl games here on ESPN game during 50 Car Rental Bowl Week. It continues tomorrow night. The Wiser Lock Copper Bowl from Tucson, Oklahoma, and BYU, 8 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow night. We've seen the coaches here tonight, Pat Sullivan and George Welsh. We mentioned earlier Bring Sullivan, down and 10, Heisman Trophy TCU. winner in 1971, three-year starting quarterback at Auburn. And George Welsh finished third in the balloting for the Heisman Trophy, 1955. Hopalong Cassidy won it that year. George was an outstanding quarterback at the Naval Academy. And there he was, circa 1955. And Here's Big George. I, I love those old poses. I, I, I hate they got away from that. You know, when you just get in front of a photographer and you'd all try to look like you can run 4-3. And the Heisman pose. George, I think the record shows, great coach. Look what's happened at Navy since he left. Oh, yeah. He's a winner at Navy. They haven't had much success since. And he came to Virginia. They had never been to a bowl game. This is their seventh in Welsh's 13 seasons in Charlottesville. On third down, they stay with Way on the run. He made it to the 10. Well, short of the first down. Galen Hyder made the tackle. And with 30 seconds left, TCU has used its final timeout. We'll see if they set up a return or if they decide to come after Will Charles, Bryce. Charles looks like he hurt his hand or maybe a shoulder. They do not want to try to play a half without this young man. Seven at the 10-yard line. See, fullbacks just going. They don't even, they don't even take you out. Well, let's see. He kind of TCU probably waved him off. Out of the first half. Well, he will get some relief. You mentioned Tiki Barber. No, no, he won't. Coming back from the fractured scapula, the shoulder blade. Yep. Mm -hmm. Suffered in the uh, end of the season. Two games to go against Virginia Tech. He missed the final game of the regular season against NC State with that fracture. So they're a little bit banged up. 
at the running back position. And as you mentioned earlier, Charles stepped up with 132 yards against NC State, and uh, they really needed his production. This is a club that really needs to run the football. Here's Dan Debenham. Hey, thanks, Sean. As the rain continues to pour, I am your plethora of information, a little unknown fact, and that is that these two teams share a mighty important date in their football history. That is December 31st, 1984. Almost 10 years ago to the date, that was the first time that Virginia ever went to a bowl game. That was the Peach Bowl, and that was the last time that TCU went to a bowl game. That was the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Something I bet you you didn't know, or did you? Yes, we did. Oh, okay. Yeah. As anyway, a matter of fact, we, we know that Virginia played Purdue uh -huh. in the Peach Bowl, and TCU played West Virginia in the now defunct Will Blue Bonnet Bowl. Do you really think he can run anything by you? All right, well, he can keep trying. He might Try. eventually. I doubt it. They did come after Bryce. John Washington fields it on the bounce and goes down immediately at the 43-yard line. Good play by Charles Way. <laughs> Looked like he was going to come out because he was banged up. He stayed on the field and ran down and made the tackle. I mean, just all man. This guy, quite an athlete. At Virginia's 44 and he still line. appears to be in pain. When well, you got seniors down on punt coverage, trying to make plays, this guy sails out, throws his body around. It was obvious that he was hurting a little bit, but wouldn't come out. 21 seconds now left in the half. 10-0 Virginia. No timeouts with which to work for TCU. Naki swings it to Davis. He needs to get out of bounds and does. At the 35-yard line, 15 seconds left. Percy Ellsworth chased him out after a gain of nine. Boy, Collins had a great block on that screen. Good to see him back in. He had a super catch on the prior series. It looked like he got up limping a little bit. But he comes back in, watch the bottom of your screen. They set the screen up, had great success. There's your block. Again, a tight end that can block and a guy that can catch. All he's got to do is stay healthy, and he'll have a great future. Pat Sullivan said the range of his field goal kicker comfortably is about 45 yards. Well, they do have the wind at their back here. Naki's pass batted down by Mike Frederick. His father, Tom, played the football at Penn State. He's a graduate student. There are seven graduate students on this Virginia team. Mike received his degree in management in May from the McIntyre School of Commerce. Watch him, though. See, he doesn't quit. You know, he's blocked. I mean, he's blocked at the point of attack, but he doesn't quit. The guy's relentless and just had a great career in Virginia. First team all ACC this year was Frederick, and he won the Bill Dudley Award as the best college football player in the state of Virginia. Third down and one. Naki deep, flag thrown. Brassfield, the intended receiver, and he got tangled up along the near sideline while Ellsworth picked it off. They're going to have a shot at a field goal. Still four seconds left, and if that's against UVA for Where putting the field? hold on Brassfield, they may well get a field goal try. Ellsworth picked it off, but the penalty is against Virginia. Penalty against Virginia. Well, that just makes that last defensive stand so important. They were able to get in, get the punt, and then come out now and hope to make a big play. Holding against the defense. The 10-yard penalty is assessed at the previous spot. Automatic first down. So they'll walk off the 10 and put the ball down near the 25-yard line. They'll spot it at the 26. So Michael Reeder comes on to attempt the field goal that will be 43 yards. His longest this year is 47. He's a redshirt freshman from Montgomery, Alabama. Three or four in this range. If he hits this, boy, they will fly in the locker room. From the right hash mark, it is long enough and good. And momentum for the Frogs as they head for the locker room, and they have not been shut out in the first half this season. 10-3 Virginia at halftime of the Poland Weeder Independence Bowl. Now to Miami and Mike Tirico. Sean, thank you very much. Coming up at halftime, a lot to tell you about here from Miami. We'll take you out to Pasadena. The news that's going on involving the Rose Bowl, the halftime blitzers have also made the bowl trip. They'll preview some of the games coming up. 
Miami Hurricanes trash talking and then backing off? Sounds odd. We'll talk about it. And special teams, big factor for both teams in the injury front heading up to the Orange Bowl. We'll tell you the latest news regarding that. All that when Lee and Craig join me at halftime. The score of our game, the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl. It's a 10-3 lead. Brett Haber from the studio with an update coming up. Welcome back to Shreveport, Louisiana at halftime of the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl, Virginia has a seven-point lead over TCU. Second half about to begin, and TCU will kick off. Brandon Najarian, sophomore from Lake Havasu, Arizona, handles the kickoffs. Tiki Barber and Demetrius Allen back to receive. The second half is underway. Coming down in the direction of Barber. And it went out of bounds Ooh. at the two. Fortunately for Virginia. And a little bit unlucky for Nigerian. That almost made it in the end zone without hitting the sideline. But instead, Virginia will get it at the 35. Why well, does he have to be scary? Kutiki, he's looking at this football. Now, Rodney Barber, his twin brother, is usually back. But he is out with injury today. You better believe that young man was holding his breath on that one. And Virginia comes right onto the field and does not huddle. Play called on the sideline. And they're ready to go from the 35. Kevin Brooks who had 88 yards rushing in the first half and he got five more out to the 40. Virginia had the edge statistically in the first half. Total yardage dramatically in their favor as was the time of possession. TCU managed 65 yards rushing. That's the average allowed by Virginia per game. Yeah, they really did well. I mean, the score doesn't indicate it. But when you look at 167 yards rushing by the Cavaliers and to only have 10 points out of it, I think TCU went in with their three points and felt like they're still in this football game. Second and five. Manvel hopes injured on the play. He hobbles off. Junior from Bay City, Texas. Second and five for UVA. Mike Grove played his high school football in New Jersey, but being the son of a coach, he had a nomadic upbringing. He estimated he lived in about 12 different places. Kevin Brooks tackled by Chuck McWilliams, but Brooks picked up the first down. Six-yard gain. He has 99 yards now, does Brooks. And here's Dan Debenham. Thanks, Sean. I had an opportunity to talk to both coaches as they came out on the field. Pat Sullivan said that TCU, of course, emotionally going in on a big high with that field goal. He says the the uh, the key here will be in his offensive line. They've got to give some time for Naki, and they also have to create some holes. I talked with George Welsh. He said he didn't tell much to his team except for, hey, guys, this is your last game for the seniors he was talking to. Remember, you're going for nine wins. Bobby Neely, the tight end, was wide open, but slipped down as the pass was approaching, and it goes to the long incompletion. And that's important for these Virginia players. They would be only the third UVA team in the history of the program, dating back to the 1800s, to win nine games. And that's been a goal all season long. They were disappointed they didn't win number nine in the regular season finale against NC State. Yeah, it, it means a lot. Uh, it would have been a lot to make that catch. But the other thing about it is that they need a bowl win. I mean, this club has been pounded on as recent years in bowl games. Tiki Barber checks in, and he gets the call and powers across midfield down at the TCU 48. Virginia has lost its last four bowl games. Jeff Stevens makes the tackle. Last win was against BYU in the All-American Bowl game that no longer exists two and four all time are the Cavs they won their first bowl game back in 84 but they've lost four in a row of late yeah I think that's really the significance for the Cavaliers is that they want to end it end on a good note third down and three just underway second half 10-3 Virginia play action from Grove has a man open and it's dropped Dropped by Tyrone Davis. 
And he had some running room beyond the first down marker had he been able to hang on. Grow now 6 out of 12 passing for 67 yards and an INT. They have had great success whenever they run the waggles or, or things to try to work that pass rush away from them. This is a ball you got to catch. It could have been up, but, you know, receivers don't ever really expect it to be perfect. You go down and you bend your knees and make the catch. For Virginia. Will Bryce in the punt. And John Washington is waiting for it. Into the wind that has died down a bit since the game began. Bryce gets the favorable roll inside the 10. And it finally stops dead at the 7 yard line. 40 yard punt, no return. And TCU will have it for the first time in the half deep in its own territory. All the scoring was in the second quarter. Rafael Garcia, a 20 yard field goal to make it 3 0 Virginia. Then the only touchdown of the half, a six yard run by Charles Way. And taking advantage of the defensive holding penalty against Virginia late in the half, Michael Reeder kicked a 43 yard field goal to get TCU on the board as the half ended. Hockey had a tough first half. Two out of 13. Did have a couple drops. Davis. Boy, he showed the ability to bounce off hits and get extra yardage, and he did again on that play out around the 12 yard line. 5'9, 185 pounds, but the guy looks like he's about 220 when he turns the corner. Some guys have the ability to do that, to get every ounce of their weight into it. Now watch him. He'll bend the lead. He'll squat. He delivers the blow. Walter Payton used to do that a lot. You know, the great backs deliver the blow, and that's a great example. Sam McIver credited with the tackle. Davis now 60 yards rushing, and Pete Hainer, the offensive coordinator, told us yesterday he had a lot of injuries this year, but played in every game, and he played in a lot of games when other guys would have bowed out. From the 12, Davis again running toward the left sideline. And he's out shy of the 15. Carried by Davis. Jamie Sharper pushed him out. Kyber again on the tackle. And that'll bring up third down and two. You know, Bud Casey, the running back coach, uh, also coach. Gain of a couple now. James Brooks, two. guys had a great career in the NFL. And, you know, he was trying to, to give us some idea about Davis. He said he's a combination. He's a tough guy, not real big, can run. There, there you get a good look at, at Bud, who spent some years at Auburn, and he had those great running backs and great offensive football teams, and he really likes this kid. On third and two, Naki throws on the run, incomplete. It was intended for Jason Tucker. Joe Williams had the coverage. For number 82, Jason Tucker. So this secondary... Well, Virginia affected by injuries tonight, particularly the loss of Rondé Barber, but they've done a good job against TCU's strong passing attack. Yeah, yeah, Crocker's been out as well, so you've got McIver and Williams who have stood in so far, and sure they've been uh, aided somewhat with the weather, but have yet to give up a big play. Eight punt by Stevens, and this one was nearly blocked, and with the win, it sails over the head of Ellsworth. And rolls to the 32-yard line. Oh, that hurts you. 48-yard punt. Yards we'll be back in just a moment. The Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl is presented by Weed Eater, lawn care equipment for all your lawn and garden needs. And in part by Lincoln Mercury and the complete line of 1995 Mercury automobiles. The Red River, they're the Shreveport the Riverfront. That's the Texas line. Street Bridge. And the Riverfront, the hot spot this week for the players, coaches, and fans. Three River Broke Casinos in the Red River. Quick pass complete. Out to the 40 yard line goes Derek Bird, the redshirt freshman, his first catch of the football game. Here's Dan. 
Yeah, thanks. I had a chance to talk with Ross Bailey, the head trainer for TCU. He told me that Brian Collins is expected to return in the second half. However, he was definitely more sore at halftime than he was at the beginning of this game. Also, Charles Way, the big fullback for Virginia, nicked up going into halftime. He's all right. And oh, by the way, guys, it's completely dry right now. <laughs> Perhaps not for long. Brooks trying to turn the corner on second and short. He got very little. Royal West, the coaches Very think he can play in the Brooks. NFL. He made the tackle. He's the son of a football Royal coach. West His dad, Royce, played at Baylor for the Denver Broncos. Is now a high school Royal. coach with Royal's junior high coach. They said Royal had a heck of an offseason. I mean, he really led the way. They pushed this entire football team, but he was one of the guys that was there first, last to leave. And is really a great example. You know, you mentioned Derek, Derek Bird prior to that with a catch. We'll get that to that in a moment, but you got to have a defensive lineman, two or three guys like that to really rally mm -hmm. a good defense. And they're fortunate. They've got three guys that can play. They're inches short. It'll be third, third down, down and less and than a yard. To go for the first down Royal West is going to play in the Hula Bowl in Honolulu, one of the all-star games. 10.57 remaining third quarter in the 19th annual Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl. Virginia, which was about a 10-point favorite of the paper this morning, leads by seven. I run right behind Brian Heath. This is a good one of those plays you just right under center, nudge it through. Charles Way, the lone back behind Grow on third and inches. Grow keeps, and he's got it. Mike Grow on the quarterback keeper. Mike Grow, we mentioned in the first half, his dad, Al Grow. Defensive coordinator of the New England Patriots done a fabulous job coaching the defense for the Pats. Al did manage to make it to one game this year during the Patriots bye week. He saw Mike play against North Carolina. Mike said they talked a couple of times each week. Mike family now makes its home in beautiful Hingham, Massachusetts. You like that, don't you? It's my hometown. I figured that. I knew you'd like it. Lovely seaside community of about 22,000. Well, it must be the high rent district if you're there. Oh, no, I had to move. My oh, parents yeah, still right, live there. Right. They live in the tough part of town. Charles Way. Malone back behind Grow, and he gets the call. Moves ahead for a couple. Teams have done a pretty good job hanging on to the ball, given the Charles wet Charles and Way. muddy conditions. Galen Heider makes a tackle. Well, Heiler, again, he's... Uh, he has had a, he had a great first quarter. Two, and you look at the stats and you think, my goodness, 187 yards. Ball up to Virginia, 43. For the season average, and you look at right now, and uh, we just got into the second half, and they're buck 89. Yeah. But it really doesn't show you or tell you what has happened in this football game. This defensive line for the Frogs has done a pretty good job. Second and eight. George Welsh said if they could rush for 200 yards tonight, he thought his team would be in great shape. They're almost there already. Bro, nice throw. And the catch made by Demetrius Allen in the TCU territory at the 35-yard line. 21-yard gain for the junior out of Norfolk, Virginia. I like Allen. Here's a guy who likes to lift weights in his free time. This is his 34th straight game he's played. He started 31 of them. Goes up, catches the ball with his hand. Now he tries to make something happen. And if you notice, there are a couple of white shirts for Virginia because Bird is now playing. Allen has been in. Some fresh legs. They've made some pretty good plays. They call him Pete. Demetrius Allen. Rose now completed passes to six different receivers. Looking to go deep again. Has a man open. Touchdown. Tyrone Davis. Well, you always say that the run sets up the pass, and this is a great example of it. Because the Frogs have started to really play the run pretty well. You get six, seven people up in the box and run that play fake. But this is about the eighth time that they've done this. And it, you catch the defensive backs in peaking, trying to support on the run. That time, uh, I guess they got everybody in the secondary. 37 yards on the touchdown. Grow to Davis. He's the seventh different receiver to catch a pass for UVA tonight. Garcia to add the extra point. 
the favors was lost. He didn't have a clue as to what was going on. And the extra point is good. Tyrone Davis had 10 touchdown receptions during the regular season. 10 of UVA's 16. And Mike Crow, like when he saw number 11. Virginia now leads 17 to 3 with 9.08 remaining in the third quarter here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Sean McDonough with Rick Walker and Dan Debitham at the 19th annual Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl. Virginia coaches working with the offense on the sideline. The offensive coordinator is Tom O'Brien. He's upstairs in the press box, and he is a candidate for the vacant head coaching job at the Naval Academy. Tom You're not about it. played at Navy and coached there with Coach Welsh. He's been an assistant to George Welsh now for 19 years, and Tom has interviewed for the job, and he expects to find out maybe by the end of this week. It's an unusual situation to uh, coach at the Academy. I think if you've had some experience with it, been through it, it is definitely an advantage for you. And Coach Welsh thinks they can get back to where they were when he was there with seven and four seasons, that type of season, if they have the right approach. Kickoff went out of bounds, Illegal TCU. Free kick, out of bounds. The ball will be snapped at the 35-yard line. We'll begin, as John Smith said, at the 35. And it's time to do something. The touchdown by Davis has put TCU in a big hole. A Davis uh, second now in the ACC in history in terms of touchdowns with 28. He's averaged over 20 yards of reception and uh, really didn't meet all the expectations that a lot of people thought he would, but he still had a pretty good year. Only Clarkson and Hines with Duke had more TD receptions among ACC receivers. That's a completion out across the 45. Naki with the tough throw picked up 11 on the completion to John Washington. Well, John does real good on this. He kind of lulls the defensive back to sleep and he keeps his feet. When you get in a bad weather game and this ball bounces off the turf on him, watch the reverse angle and see how, how he comes up here, is that he does not lose his footing. It's important that you maintain that and keep those, that weight over the balls of your feet and come back for the football. Tough to tell where the sideline is over there. Like Washington was juggling it, but was credited with the catch. And now he gets the rinse. <laughs> Naki going deep for Oliver, and it is incomplete. Carl Smith had coverage. Naki now three for 16 passing for 33 yards. They shuttle the plays in with the wide receivers. One of the reasons why Virginia led the nation in interceptions. They put such good pressure on you. You get behind, then you've got to get the ball up. See, right now, they you just don't want to get into the point where you've got to make it all in one play. They need to try to work that intermediate passing zone and see if they can find some spots in the zone. 27 interceptions this year for UVA were an ACC and school record. They also led the nation in interceptions last year, 22. Davis in trouble down at the line of scrimmage. Well defense by Jamie Sharper and company. One of the few times you'll see a poor run by Davis. I mean, you can't Start hesitate in this situation. You got to make up your mind and go for it. When you need Naki to come out and block for you, you know you're in trouble at that point. We mentioned Virginia led the country in interceptions this year and last year. Do yeah. you know what player led all of college football in interceptions? Last year, college football? Last year? Last year. No, I don't. He's in our booth. Our spotter, Chris Hellon. Oh, that's right. Well, you already told me that. And I, you didn't remember. Uh, 12 yeah, interceptions but... for a terrific Boston University team. Naki over the middle. Intercepted right on two. Picked off by Randy Neal. His fourth interception of the season and three in the regular season and returned two of them for touchdowns. Ball went off the hands of Naki's intended receiver and wound up in the arms of Neal, the senior from Hackensack, New Jersey. You better be glad he didn't get a hand on it because what happens is that he'll be here in the middle of the field and what happens is that these linebackers start to drop, drop for you. The ball looks, appears like it's going to be tippy. Trey fakes the screen and goes in. It goes right off the hand 
and if that's just a tip drill that's a reaction drill that most defensive coaches work with their kids on year in and year out and that time it pays off so virginia with a 14 point lead begins in tcu territory at the 49 grove eluded Tylan and throws short bobby neely turns it into a healthy game down to the 30. 19 on the pickup for UVA. Neely knows what to do with the football when it gets into his hands. Junior out of Atlanta. Tight end running and intermediate. So he's just waiting there, waiting for something to happen. Presents a good target for his quarterback. Shows the numbers. Sucks the ball in and moves upfield. UVA can go for the juggler now, Sean. Yep. They have TCU on the ropes midway through the third quarter. Draw Brooks across the 30, and that's all. Of course, this possession set up by Neal's interception. We talked about his two interception returns for touchdowns this year. 77 yards against Georgia Tech, 28 yards for TD against NC State. He is the first UVA player to return four interceptions for a touchdown in a career. Only two players in NCAA history have had more INT returns for touchdowns. Jackie Walker of Tennessee of the 60s. Ken Thomas of San Jose State. Well, he's an old high eight. school tight end. You know that. Now. One of the reasons he's got great hands. Bro swings it out. And slipping down was Tiki Barbert. Pass complete to Tiki Barbert. Good thing Tiki slipped on that one. That'll bring up third down. There's Randy Neal. You know, it's good to see this young man finishing off strong. Hurt his knee against FSU in the opener and really had a slow start. That slow start still had 100 tackles. But can you imagine had he been healthy the entire year? I mean, he's an outstanding athlete. We talked about the interceptions. Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, told us yesterday he's also picked off four passes when the opposition was going for a two-point conversion. Right, you're right. You're right. Good point. They toss it to Barber. Make a tackle up the first down they had a chance to stop him near the line of scrimmage and prevent the first down but he bounced off and went down to the 19 yard line manvel hopes reggie anderson combining on the play for tcu tough runner you know this guy led the team in all purpose yard watch the block in there by tyrone davis big number 82 comes in on the crack back and makes this happen and i just love wide receivers that are unselfish and that will come in and block kaya martin had a chance to Make that tackle short of the first down, but couldn't wrap up. Tiki Barber. Throw. Throw. It's complete. There was some bumping down there, and Patrick Jeffers wanted a flag as he collided with Chuck McWilliams. That's intended for number 81. It might have been Patrick Jeff Stevens. Jeffers incomplete. Tough to Second tell the numbers now with the mud accumulating on the player's uniform. It's a good scheme when you want to get, you got a receiver 6-2, you want to take advantage. They got crossed up, but I don't think anything was intentional on that whatsoever. It was Nick Williams. On second down, back to the run with Kevin Brooks. And he took a hit after a short game. Jeff Stevens up from the safety spot. In on that play, he's a sophomore from Fort Bend, Texas. And Brooks is over 100 yards for the game. 13 rushes, 103 yards. It's his third 100-yard game of 94. Had two in the regular season against Wake Forest and Virginia Tech. So got to add, he had the one big run that really helped him out a lot. The Frogs have really been persistent. I mean, you take away that one big run, and they're still, they had him pretty much in check. And Virginia calls timeout, 445 timeout, remaining in the third quarter. The Cavaliers of George Welsh looking to build on a 14-point lead. Car Rental Bowl Week. A college bowl game every day for six days. With two games on Friday and Saturday. Filled with action. Overflowing with competitive spirit. It's the only solid week of bowls on television. So keep your eye on the bowl. Tomorrow, thrifty Car Rental Bowl Week continues with the Wiser Lock Copper Bowl. Presented by Ford. As Coach Gary Gibbs in his final game leads Oklahoma against BYU. Tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. 
Virginia with a two touchdown lead as we approach the fourth quarter. More TCU fans in attendance due to the proximity of the campus in Fort Worth to Shreveport. Much longer trip for the Cavaliers of Virginia. Looking at third and eight at the TCU 17 yard line. Rowe goes out of the shotgun. Movement, but no flags down. Apparently the Frogs got back. Tiki Barber. Nowhere near first down yardage. They'll mark it with a 14. And a field goal here would put George Welsh up by more than two scores. And that's the play for George. Still a great, great defensive series. You gotta you gotta believe that. If the frogs give up seven, they're done. So at some point, you know, the defense continues to give them a shot, but that offense is gonna have to start making some plays. Gain of four will bring up fourth down. Garcia. Missed early from 46, made one from 20. This is a 32-yard attempt. Tim Sherman is the holder. And that kick is good. And the kick is good. Mike Bro moved the Cavs into the field goal range. Garcia did his job. And now the Cavs lead by 17. I think Mac realizes, though, when you're going up against a group that has an offense that has been as, as strong as, as TCU, you want the seven. Because you do have to think somewhere in this football game, Jimmy Oliver will work himself open and knock you, hit him with a big one. This has been their chemistry. They had 34 plays over 30 yards or more, 21 plays over 40 yards or more. And so this, this offense has it built in. So far, hasn't worked. And both coaches said that would be a key tonight. If TCU could get the big plays, they had a chance. And there he is. Thrifty Car Rental Bowl Week continues tomorrow night. The Copper Bowl, Oklahoma and BYU, 8 Eastern Time. Then on Friday, two games, 1 p.m. the Heritage Bowl, South Carolina State and Grambling. At 9 p.m. the Holiday Bowl, Colorado State and Michigan. On Saturday at 1, the Liberty Bowl, Illinois and East Carolina. Then at 8, the Alamo Bowl, Baylor and Washington State. On Sunday, the Peach Bowl, Mississippi State and NC State. And on Monday at 11 a.m., the Hall of Fame Bowl, Wisconsin and Duke. Wow. A lot of bowling. Well, you did the Alamo Bowl last year. I did. They do a nice job. That'll be the second year of the Alamo Bowl at the Alamo Dome. Looking forward to that. You'll enjoy it. Jimmy Oliver. Can I throw your name around in rescue restaurants? Won't help you. <laughs> Certainly didn't help us here in Shreveport last night. Brass field. Up the field. And great effort. Looked like he was stacked up at the 34. Flag down late. 14 yard return. He got close to the 40 yard line. And the flag was thrown at the very end of the play. And a late hit. Now, this is a strong effort. And the Frogs need somebody to step up and do something positive. This is just determination. This kid does not want to go down. He just flat refuses to go down. And then you watch it at the end. Let's see who makes the knucklehead move. We don't get a chance to. After the return. Apparently John Smith didn't like the echo coming through the stadium PA system. Decided to kill his microphone. And I'm wondering if we can get down to Dan just to figure out what's happening on the on the frog sideline. I mean, at some point, somebody's got to stir some things up. If not, they're not going to have a chance to win this football game. Well, they have excellent field position here at the 48 of UVA. Andre Davis. And here is Dan. Well, Rick, actually, you know, I've been walking up and down behind the TCU benches here, and they uh -huh. are not fired up. You can see the line. They're meeting over here as a team. They've got their heads down in their laps. They really seem resigned at this moment. They are down by 17, but they do have an entire quarter plus some to try to come back. And I'm really surprised that they are so resigned, so quiet, really so submissive at this point. And that's the way it's been for really about 10 minutes behind here. Well, Dan, you know it, man. To play football, you got to play at a high level of emotion. And I'm just surprised that somebody over there is not stirring up something. Big hole for Davis. 
That might get them revved up on the sideline. He's down to the 25-yard line. Gain of 17. Carl Smith, the safety, made the tackle. Well, this is a start. You know, one thing UVA has got to caution itself on, not to think the game is over. That's just great offensive line play. I mean, those big guys up front knocking people off the ball, that's where it all starts. And then you got a back like Davis. Man, how can you not be successful? Lock runs under three minutes remaining in the third quarter. 20 to 3, Virginia has the lead. Davis up to 87 yards, chance for more. Woods, fine lead block. And Davis follows him out of bounds. Well, that boy would. Wow. Gain of eight. They'll mark him out at the 17. Run out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Now you talk about number five, Coy Woods, the fullback, eight, another one of those unsung heroes. Six footer, about 225, and just loves hitting people. Major, major difference in this. They can't throw the football. They were you the number one total offense out. team in yep. the Southwest Conference Absolutely. this year with that 412 average. Well, you don't get co-players of the year on your squad if you can't do something with the football. The conditions have been a factor, and the Cavaliers have been a factor. Davis now up to 95 yards rushing. He had seven 100-yard games during the regular season. Cavaliers on a blitz. And Davis couldn't get away from it. Flags down, thrown at the line of scrimmage. There was movement along the line. Ricky Neal made a nice play to bring down Davis. That was a great play. The middle linebacker can run a back down like Davis from behind. But I think the hard count got him off, off, uh, got him off the ball. Against Virginia. It is offside against Virginia. George Welsh lost his hat after seeing that call. Speaking of George Welsh and hats, the new logo on the helmet for Virginia this year was designed by George's son, Matthew, 25 years old, a graduate of UVA in their studio art program. I think he did a pretty nice job with the yeah. new look. Yeah, I, I, I like the Navy. Much more blue accentuated uniform this year and not as much orange as in What the he needs to worry about right now is his defense. Because the Frogs have got a little momentum. They're at the 12. First man is Woods. And he was down. Ball might have squirted out, but he was stacked up at the 10 yard line. And Chris Baum, he was in the middle of it. Ashman running towards that line. Numbers are awful. 3 of 17, 33 yards and one I and T. Here's a young guy who threw for 24 touchdowns, only had seven interceptions. So this has not been his night so far. But I still think there was in striking distance. They need seven. The only Southwest Conference quarterback in history to throw for more than 24 touchdowns in a season were the Houston running shooters, Andre Ware and the brothers Clayton, David, and Jimmy. Naki on target with that one. Short of the first down, Chris Brassfield, the junior from San Antonio, down at the three, about a yard shy. On third down, upcoming gain of seven, Joe Crocker made the stop for UVA. Brassfield and Washington, two guys, about 25 catches apiece, great intermediate receivers, run super routes. You watch this, boy, on a slick turf, that is not easy to do, folks, to get your body turned around, focus on the football, and make the reception. One yard for a first down, three for a touchdown. They've not converted a third down tonight. Davis might have picked up the first down. With under a minute remaining in the third quarter. Virginia leading 20 to 3. The officials stop the clock. They may measure. Even Pat Sullivan is muddied on the sideline. Yeah, I like that. Nice look for the coach with a little mud on it. The thing that has kept this TCU club in the game is that their philosophy, they run the football by their nature. They're not a run-and-shoot club or a club that has the wing the football down the field in order to win, and that's what's kept them alive. Frogs haven't been in the bowl in a while, 10 years. They are inches short and a decision for Coach Sullivan. They're down by 17. He needs a touchdown, and they're going for it. He's giving the play to Naki. Coach Sullivan... Certainly plenty of bowl game experience as an assistant at Auburn, also as a player. And what a player he was in bowl games. MVP of the Gator Bowl in 1970, MVP of the Sugar Bowl in 71, the Senior Bowl in 72. Yeah, that's doing it. That's doing it under prime time. Look at All-American center, Robbins, right in the middle. Hockey keeps. 
And he went right behind the center and nearly got the touchdown. Appeared to pick up the first down. Looked like Naki was juggling the ball a bit as he plunged forward. You're right. Boy, if he secures that, he might scoot in. Looks from here like they have the first down. Got an All-American like Barry Robbins. Man, you put a saddle on him and you ride him. It is a first down. Yeah, but see, watch the center come off. The Robbins comes off, gets good surge. The two guards, all the pad placement is low. I mean, you're going up against the Cavaliers, stingiest group to run on in the country. First and goal for the Browns at the two-yard line. There's Robbins, yeah. In the pile, Barrett Robbins wearing number 71, senior from Houston. His man has not recorded a sack in 28 games. The last guy to be in for a sack was Albert Fontenot of Baylor in 1992. Davis on first and goal in trouble and swarmed under back at the seven-yard line. Mike Frederick, the first man to hit him, and then he had plenty of help. A loss of six on what will be the final play of the third quarter. Oh, Michael, point number one. That's right, pal. You've been number one against the run. It's not easy to do. They'll head all the way to the other end, and TCU will have to work into the wind in the fourth quarter. They're down by 17, but threatening when we come back. Fourth quarter is about to begin in the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl. And this, I think, Rick, was not a very good call. It's all Mike Frederick. I mean, he just makes it a bad one. He gets, he has 15 plays in the regular season for losses. And that's how you judge defensive players. Can they break that imaginary line, go in and create havoc? That was an excellent play by an outstanding ball player. TCU was at the one, first and goal. They could have tried to slam it in four times. Instead, they ran a risky play, and it hurt them. Naki got him back to the one. First time we've seen the option look tonight. And again, it was Frederick in on the tackle for Virginia. Boy, he ran it well. He ran it very well. And you can cut on a dime on this field. One is a credit to the staff. That got this field in pretty good shape. But that's a play where you can go for broke or you can have a bad one on a toss. Look at the intensity in that guy's eyes. You can tell he's been there. Oh, a touchdown here, and it's a game again. This team down by 17, but a lot of time left. They are 0 for 10 on third down tonight for Cross. Got to run right at him. You're not going to run around him. And they're 0 for 11. Davis tried to go up and over and did not make it. Fourth and goal from inside the one. Now what? Yeah, I don't think you three does it. Yeah, you can't say it doesn't do you nothing. I, I, I got to get seven on this. This, you get your best back, he goes up, they get no movement. Too many blue, purple shirts standing up. White shirts down. As Johnny Major says, a bit low man wins. You got to bend your knees, man, and go in and root people off the line of scrimmage. You're playing for a bowl win. They haven't converted a third down, but they are one for one on fourth down tonight. That was moments ago. Davis, play action fake. He's open. Touchdown. Brian Collins. They fake to Davis up and over. Collins was wide open in the back of the end zone, and Naki did not miss him. Wow. That is the second leading receiver on the team. Brian Collins missed the go-to get wide open on play action. You better believe Coach is not happy with that at all. Now that was a good call. It's a great play. It takes super execution, but you just can't trick anybody with that. Not to have, they're just too aggressive on this. They come in. I mean, this is wide open. And now I just have to think when you've got Rondé Barber who's not playing and uh, Crocker to your starting corners, maybe, you know, pick things up on recognition a little better. Michael Reader. That's the point. 1328 left in the ball game, Virginia. And with 1328 remaining, TCU is back within 10. Naki through 24 during the regular season. And that's his first in a ball game. He's smooth. Sullivan is smooth. No panic. Not highly emotional about it. Understands that they've you know, got a long time to go. And I think the kids see that on the sideline. Collins, a gutty effort. He did not participate in practice yesterday. The coaches thought best case scenario, 
He'd get in for 10 plays, maybe 15 tonight. He's been in there the whole night playing on a badly sprained ankle. And he has been a factor throughout the game, blocking and receiving. And has the touchdown catch. He had seven during the regular season of the first team all Southwest Conference selection. Now he's a stud. That's all you can say. When a kid gets hurt, he got hurt last Tuesday. And uh, we talked to him right up the games. I mean, Dan had right, right, right with the coaches. They did not know whether or not this young man would play. These are exciting times for TCU fans. We mentioned the uh, renovation at the stadium a couple of years ago when Sullivan arrived to make it a grass field. They put in a two and a half million dollar weight facility. They're heading to the WAC in 1996. This was a program that had been losing records in eight of the last nine years, but. The future is bright as they head to the WAC. Very bright. The WAC is outstanding. Look at this guy. I still say I want to take this guy to an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> and uh, the scaled-down version. And a mechanical version. How many versions do they have? My goodness. Lots of horned frogs. Diggy Barber back. For the kickoff from Brandon Nigerian. It'll come down around the 17 yard line. And Tiki brought it out across the 35 yard line. Dan Debithan come in. Kick return by Tiki Barber. Hey, Sean, I'm standing by with maybe the happiest guy in the stadium right now. That's Kenneth Davis, the TCU alum, the last consensus All-American from TCU, of course, playing for the Buffalo Bills, or maybe I should say not playing right now. 13 what? 13-22 left in the game. Hey, the Frogs can come back. Yes, they still got a chance. They're only down by 10 points. It was great for them to go down and get those seven points. Come back and get another seven. Hold them here and get another seven points. They're right back in it. This speaks volumes of you to come back and watch uh, your old school. How loyal are TCU alums? I think they're very loyal. I think not only they're very loyal, only because it's a small university, and they really do care about you not only as a player, but also as a student athlete. All right, well, right now they're on defense, so they're going to have to suck it up once again. I know you have a vested interest. Thanks for talking with us. Kenneth Davis, let's go ahead and go back upstairs, Sean. Thanks, Dan. What a great job Kenneth has done backing up Thurman well, Thomas for those many years. And Buffalo, another team. He might be a feature back who we would have heard a lot more about, but he's done that role in Buffalo and done it nicely. He's a consummate team player. I mean, that's all you can say. Talk about a small classroom, too, at TCU. 15, 20 people in the classroom. They, they've got some advantage. Eight of one on the first play for UVA on a carry by way. Groh took a shot, but put it right on the money for a first down. Just shy of the 50-yard line. Demetrius Allen to catch. Gain of 13. To number two, Demetrius Allen. Looked like Scott Taft, the reserve linebacker, came in to put the pop on Groh. This is what you have to like, Mike Groh. He's a stud. I mean, he stays in the pocket. He knew, I mean, you got to know you're going to get hit. It doesn't alter his force. He's able to get that ball off. 6'3", close to 200 pounds. Guy real heady. I like him. I mean, he has persevered at UVA. He's got talent, and I think it's going to play a long time. Wayne Brooks in the eye. Play action for Grohl. Chased out of the pocket. And across midfield. No sliding from Mike Groh. As a yeah, matter of fact, he it. gave the defender a little shove. He delivered the blow. So you got a quarterback that delivers the blow. And if I'm an offensive lineman on his team, I mean, you just get large now. You want to fight for this man. Well, I think this is poor officiating here, too. There are four officials standing right there, including the referee, John Smith. They're breaking it up. Both sides pushed and shoved. Then the officials stand out in the middle of the field, 20 yards away, throws the flag. Yeah, but when you're trying to close in and you're TCU, you got to play... He's smarter. You got to play from the neck up. Now here's a quarterback with some guts. He lowers his shoulder and delivers the blow. Takes on the mud, then gets up. Now see, there's, there's a little there. There's one, two, three going. officials right here. Well, there's none of question. these guys threw a flag. An official standing in the middle of the field by the hash mark threw the flag from 20 yards away. Sean, if you're trailing, if your team is behind. You're Royal Royal West. You cannot do that. You got to play smart. You can't let the motions overrun. You're trailing, man. You're not leading. You're trailing. That's a knucklehead move by the frog. And now Virginia is creeping toward field goal range at the 32-yard line. They are operating with the wind at their backs here in the fourth quarter, leading by 10, 12 and a half minutes remaining. The trickery did not fool the frog. Bill wound up. Keeping it and goes down for a loss. Back to the 34. 
Take the handoff to Davis. And it's a loss of two. See, that's how you pay a quarterback back. If you don't like what he just did, you pay him back doing regulation. You put a Rydell helmet right under his chin. Mike's the fourth Virginia quarterback in the last five years to lead the ACC in passing. 1990, Sean Moore. 91, Matt Blunden. 92, Bobby Goodman. And Grove this year. And he's having a solid night under difficult conditions tonight. Kevin Brooks over 100 yards and adding to it with an 8-yard gain to the 26. He's up to 111 yards on 14 carries. The thing about it now, the level of intensity has just been jacked up. TCU gets a score. Now you get a challenge. You get a quarterback that... Uh, I think it just brings the team up. I, immediately, I don't want to play with the guy. I mean, all quarterbacks slide, jumping out of bounds, hope it don't want to get dirty. This guy is, uh, he's impressive. Coach say grows a typical coach's son. Very intelligent, a terrific leader, a great understanding of the game. Mike said he isn't sure, but he might want to get into coaching when he's done playing at UVA. He throws a bad one. Right into the hands of Scott Taft. Taft fumbles the football. And it's three at the 34, and the Cavs are saying they got it back. Oh, we're praising Grow. He throws an INT. Taft comes in, said two great plays. We're about to praise him. He gives it back. And now Coach Sullivan realizes that he can't let his team get down emotionally now. They got to stay up on this thing. They got to believe. This is what you want. This is uncharacteristic for Michael. I mean, Tap gets a good drop. He's trying to force the ball in to Tyrone Davis. At this point, secure the football, young man. I mean, you got to secure the ball. You got a chance to bring your club back. Tom Lachlan hit him. The backup offensive guard. And Jason Augustino recovered the fumble. Ball wound up back at the 35, but a new set of downs for UVA. That could be demoralizing for the Frogs. They needed a big play and got it. And then handed the ball right back. Brooks, here comes another late flag. This might be on the Cavs. Right? Brooks and flag on you know, the this field. is the way the guys in stripes kind of even things out. See, I like Sullivan. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Virginia. Now they even things out. Yeah, they heard you. They heard you. That's, you know, Sullivan, you know, here's a guy, as soon as he saw the, the interception drop, he immediately started to cheer and tell his troops to stay up. That is very important that those guys look to you as, as a leader and realize you're not disappointed in them. This will be a major walk-off. 15 yards against UVA. And the Cavs back at the 46-yard line now. 10-27 remaining. Virginia leads 20-10. And they run the clock. Jamie Sharper on the sideline. He was questionable coming into the game with an ankle injury. And Barrier had one as well. Those guys uh, a little nicked up. Hopefully that's not too serious. Well, it looks like a knee problem. Wow, look at this. 379 to 149 in total yardage. Score is 2010. Second and 21. Bro. Fine run. Mike's down at the 39-yard line. Eight of seven. Mike Moulton in on the stop with Reggie Anderson. It looks like Moulton has a helmet problem. And he's not the least bit pleased about it. No, he's not. I, I don't want to be the equipment man at this point. That equipment man's running. Oh, Reginald West. Oh, Reggie. Good linebacker for him. But you know, Mike Groke, he, he talks back to linebackers. I guess when your father's a court, the defensive coordinator, he's not intimidated, defensive player. Out of the shotgun. Bro, man open. It's the tight end, Neely again. Inside the 10 with a first down for Virginia. Pass complete to number 88, Bobby Neely. I'm always partial to quarterbacks to throw the tight end. <laughs> he looks him off. See, the key to that is that he's able to look the defense off. Caught him right in the sweet spot of the zone. He keeps the ball right up the hash. Makes a good catch, and this is why Mike Grow led the ACC in passing. I mean, he's poised. 27-yard game. They give it to Charles Way. 
And he's inside the five. Alluded the grass with Tyrone Roy. He was trying to pull him down by the shirt. That's Charles not going to work against here. big Charles Way at 227. Good to see Charles back in the game. Now what the Frogs have to do now is you got to swell up. You got to think now that we give up three at the absolute maximum. That you don't give up the seven. That you make the condition real tough for the Cavaliers. Second and goal from the three. Eight and a half minutes remaining. DC has all three of its timeouts remaining. Virginia has two. Way up to 79 yards rushing now on 19 carries. Brooks is over 100 yards rushing. Daryl Medley is checked in at fullback. And they give it to Way again. And he pounded it down to the two. A gain of one. Third and goal upcoming. You know, we talk a lot about leverage and the pad placement staying low. Royal West is just an outstanding player for the Frogs. This guy will show you what it's like to really get down and not give up position. I mean, he's going up against Chris Harrison, Slocum, two, two outstanding offensive linemen. But that young man really is the reason that play was disrupted. And George Welsh reading his lips was talking about a play action pass. But Correction, third and goal. Oh, oh, you read lips? Not very well. He was asking, though, that question has appeared to one of the coaches around him. Mike Grow. Well, you want to give up confused. a PO now? Wow. Well, he'd rather use the timeout than take the five yard penalty. One timeout left for the Cavs. Back in a moment. Weed Eater Independence Bowl is presented by Bolin Pro, makers of professional quality outdoor power equipment for your home. And in part by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? The Caddo Parish Courthouse, one of the local landmarks in the Shreveport area. Metropolitan area, about 380,000. And these folks do a terrific job hosting the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl. These teams have had a great time. There's a lot of talk about Virginia being disappointed they didn't go to a top-level bowl, but Coach Welsh said the players have really enjoyed the hospitality and the activities of the bowl folks here. Oh, it's been great. Third and goal from the two. Play action, and they do pass, and it's incomplete. He's throwing that to Slocum. And the flag comes in because Slocum is not an eligible receiver. And Grow hit him right in the numbers. So I think reading George Welsh's lips, it was a play action. You were pass. right. All right, John. You were right. You were trying to give me the needle about that. I just uh, want to go back and I won't make doubt the you point again that it was a play 30 pass. seconds, okay? Want me to tell you what he's saying now? Yeah, Boy, that was now? a rotten call. Who called that play? <laughs> Illegal touching. We saw that penalty earlier in PCU, and it is. A loss of down. Oh, Mark, you watch this now. Let's watch the little kicking action here. Oh, oh my goodness. Awful. Now, that's bad. That is bad. Wasn't exactly oh, Vincent Pryor. That's, that's, that's Makaya Martin, and uh, he's lucky he got away with that. So he should be thrown out of the game, yep. out of the league. So now a field goal, and it will keep TCU within two touchdowns, even if it is good. You mentioned they really needed to keep it to, at most, a three-pointer. Oh, yeah. RC is two out of three tonight. 25-yard attempt. Block! And it rolls dead in the end zone. My goodness, that's McWilliams. And it goes out of the back of the end zone. And Bro is really upset on the sideline. Well, he had two bad plays in that, in that drive, and you know he doesn't like it. This is uncharacteristic for the cab. That's just a great way to come around the corner with great speed, super extension. That is the way you do it, folks. Chuck McWilliams with the block. TCU will have it at the 20. Mike Grow on the phone talking to Tom O'Brien, the offensive coordinator in the press box. Grow moments ago, as they lined up for the field goal, was none too pleased with something that involved the coaches hollering at George Welsh and then uh, he stormed off well I don't think they're talking about what they're going to eat after the game I mean he did not like that particular call you see I like a quarterback that has some backbone he still had two bad plays he had an interception and he threw one to a lineman so he's probably bad man at himself but he just lost his cool 721 remaining 
Davis. TCU is down by 10. They have three timeouts remaining. They need to move the ball and score on this drive with time running out. 93 yards now for Davis. He was uh, late showing up here in Shreveport. They were supposed to report on Christmas Day. Right. And because it's not that far from Fort Worth, Coach Sullivan let the team congregate here. And right. He was a no-show for practice on Sunday, so on Monday he was up at 5 a.m. running the stairs of the stadium. And Coach Casey had him up running, but he, he did it. He got to those legs, too. Reverse. Oliver can run. Has blockers out there. And he goes out of bounds at the 27, three yards short of a first down. That looked like a promising play, but they needed to block one Cavalier that they didn't get on the near sideline. Well, that's the thing about Virginia. Their linebackers run so well, and they don't take fakes like this. I mean, they got defensive linemen, again, they can, they can run well. They lose contains a little bit, but Ashton plays a very good job on that. I mean, Ashman stays at home and forces him just to bellow out enough so that the rest of his teammates could uh, converge. They still have not converted a third down tonight. The Frogs are 0 for 11. Six and a half minutes remaining. They're down by 10. And will throw for it. And they have it. Oliver. Dragged down by the shirt at the 49-yard line. Gain of 22. Carl Smith made the tackle. But if he didn't pull him down, it might have been off to the races for Oliver with his 4.26 speed. Well, you're right. The other good thing about it is that you throw him in the mud. See, I'd want him with all mud all over him. This guy's too fast. 4.26. You got to do anything you can to slow him down. So I roll him in the mud, and I do it again and again and again, try to wait this guy down a little bit. He can fly. That was a 22-yard play. They had 34 plays this season of 30 yards or more. They haven't had any of those 30-yarders plus tonight. And the officials are conferring at midfield where the ball has been spotted with 6.14 remaining. And how do you know where he went out of bounds? You know, the weather has, uh, has somewhat backed off, which I think helps TCU. But still, for the TCU program, this is still a very positive step. Would you please put 12 seconds on the game clock? That was the reason for the discussion. 6.14 showing, and they'll put 6.26 up there. Got to give our crew credit. At halftime, they hustled and changed the clock that was yeah, they, the they target the of our bulb. camera. Yeah. They are now aiming at the one that has light bulbs that are <laughs> all functioning. <laughs> For those of you who missed the old clock, there it is. You know, you got so much to think about when you're putting on a big bowl. You got thousands of people coming into your town, and you know, somebody just forgot the light bulb. This is an upcoming sports town, too. We mentioned the Shreveport Pirates, expansion CFL team, play in this stadium. They have a CBA basketball team here, minor league baseball. Shreveport. Six for 20 now is Naki, but he's completed his last three. First and 10, they did reset the clock. Toss to Davis, very little. Across the midfield, and that's all. Gary Brown in the arms of Ryan Keel. Keel's there. Skeet Jones is there. I mean, this, you know, this is the thing about it. I mean, Ryan Keel, real solid player for him. And once again, he's got had five sacks, 13 tackles for losses. Second team, all ACC. I mean, all of them. Chris Baum, these guys are just very steady. Ryan Keel has a special interest in the Vietnam War. He did a history project on Vietnam in high school and has read more than 30 books on the subject over the years. Another one of those graduates. Looks like they're trying to set up a screen. Now he has running room up the middle of the field. And he's down very close to a first down at the UVA 41-yard line. Sam McIver credited with the tackle. It's very close. And they'll stop the clock with 5.14 remaining. Let's take a look at it.
Max Nagy said this game is huge. He talked about the progress of this TCU program. Right. Now they're in the spotlight tonight on national television and trying to finish off this season with a flourish and continue that momentum with into the offseason season and next right. year. You're right, and with a great effort. You know, Virginia's the highest ranked team to play in the Independence Bowl. So that's an additional pressure. And they come in and you know it's bad weather conditions and they've had some reasons to where they could just have rolled over because the Cavaliers were rolling on the ground, but they didn't. And they've shown a real sense of pride. They're a great, well-conditioned football team, and they've still got a chance. Third and less than a yard. One out of 12 are the Horn Frogs on third down. 5-14 remaining. They'll wind the clock again as soon as they reset the chains. And time is running out for TCU. They need a score on this drive. That was great defensive recognition on the part of the Cavaliers. I mean, that... Rick Lance, his group, they knew exactly what was going on. They figured it out well and took it away from him. Davis has the first down. To the 40. That'll take the clock under five minutes once they move the chains and run the clock again. That's 97 yards now on 24 carries for Andre Davis. If there's one thing, Sean, that I think TCU has been hurt by most in this game is that they've not been able to get the ball to Davis through the air. I mean, he was their leading receiver, caught a lot of screens, and they've really not been able to get into that package as well as they like to. Virginia, defensive coaches were expecting more screens and draws from TCU than Absolutely. we've seen here tonight. Mm -hmm. He's trying to do that to UVA to slow down that big pass rush. They swing it out, and Davis got nothing. Tackled by Mark Pritchbaum, who missed the first half of the season with a Basketball fractured left Davis. leg and has come back in strong fashion. Yeah, he has. Here's a guy, 280-pounder, gets out on the screen. Great recognition. He flies to the football, you know, and hangs on, makes a great play. I mean, when you're big people up front, those down linemen, I, I can't see enough about the effort that they've given, not only tonight, but all year long. They've allowed those three linebackers, uh, Sharper, Neal, and Ferrier, to really excel. You surprised TCU is a little bit quicker in and out of the huddle here. I mean, yes. the play clock on this play is down to 10. Or down to a no huddle. Yeah, and they're under four minutes left. It might be time for the hurry up, needing two scores as they do. Brassfield hit immediately. Short gain for Brassfield. It was Joe Williams, who's been solid in action tonight for Rondé Barber. For his first start, he's done real well. Third and eight upcoming. And I can do all without all the action after the play on a basic tackle. I mean, that's his job. Come on, make a tackle. He acts like he just scored a touchdown. And again, no great sense of urgency from TCU here. The clock ticks down to 320. 20 to 10, Virginia. Naki with all day. Going deep for the end zone. Incomplete. And Senator Jimmy Oliver. And Sam McIver had the coverage. And it's a good thing Jimmy spun around to try to make the catch because uh, from the back, it was tough to see that number four. Yeah, it's four. The thing about it is that Oliver on this, I mean, he's in full control. He is in control of this deal. Oliver is here. He's going to take it right down downfield. And what you're going to find is that the defensive back loses sight of the football. This is just a go route. His head is down. He doesn't know where the ball is. If the ball is upfield more, I think Oliver would have had a shot. Fourth and eight. They're two for two on fourth down, but both times it was short yardage. Virginia brings a four-man rush. Naki under pressure. Throws. Crock. Brasfield would have had a first down, but couldn't take it in. What an athletic move by Naki. Brasfield incomplete. Boy, that was competing. That young man was competing on that play. Boy, Brassfield's got to make the catch. First and 10 Virginia. The failure to take it in a huge play. Virginia in command now with three minutes left. A painter known for his moody nocturnals of London. Carol, you premi. Cookie Gilchrist. Abe Gibran. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt's foreign policy was... The running shoot, the wishbone, crazy leg purge, the button hook, Norm Bullock, the Providence steamroller. Final question. 
the poetry composed by medieval knights. Can the line. Shoot What is John Reagan's haircut? We have a tie? Yeah! They do know football. ESPN's semi-winning pregame show NFL game day, Sundays at noon. John McDonough with Rick Walker and Dan Debenham at the Independence Bowl in Shreveport. This might have been the last hurrah for TCU. What a way to go out, though. That was gutsy. He spun around me. Max gave his guts out for that. Would have been a great catch. So now UVA will try to chew up the clock. 3.02 remaining. They lead by 10. Flag down way down for a loss on the play and TCU immediately called timeout. Very impressive performance offensively for Virginia. They rushed the ball well and Groh's been very solid. 14 out of 22. TCU is offside. That hurts. They've never been able to just put them away. They've mauled them but they couldn't knock them out. That says a lot really for, for TCU. 199 yards passing for Groh tonight. A touchdown and interception. Dan Debenham. Well, you're talking about Mike Groh, and of course, last time we saw him on the sidelines, he was in a heated argument with his head coach, and then we assume with uh, Tom O'Brien upstairs. What we didn't see was after he slammed down that phone, the phone rang right back. He picked back up the phone, and believe me, after about 10 seconds of talking to, we assume once again, Tom O'Brien, he gently put the receiver back down. So uh, he learned his lesson there, but he's had a great game out here today. Well, Mike's a terrific young man. I'm sure when he looks back at this game tonight, he'll feel... Sorry about that episode. Yeah. Well, the guy wants to win. You know, he's, he's competitive, uh, but you got to be under control. I mean, it happened to, to Royal West. He got a 15-yarder. He's a great, great football player, but that's the thing Jeremy about the game. you got to play within the, in the confines. On, on first and five, Way got the carry. And that penalty really hurts TCU because uh, first down for Virginia here, and the game is just about over. TCU has called a timeout. With 2.33 remaining, we'll be back for the final minutes of the Independence Bowl after this. Virginia in command with two and a half minutes remaining. They lead by 10. More bowl action here on ESPN tomorrow night as Thrifty Car Rental Bowl Week continues with the Wiser Lock Copper Bowl presented by Ford. Lots of sponsors in that sentence. Oklahoma versus BYU tomorrow night, 8 Eastern time. Gary Gibbs' last game as coach at Oklahoma trying to go with a win. Will it be John Walsh's last game as quarterback at BYU? We don't know. And neither does John. Second down considering it, he is apparently waffling. Well, whatever it is, it's good not to make that announcement until after the game. Yes. Second and three. Timeout, and this one is, for all intents and purposes, over. And he's very close to the first down. And timeout called by the officials. Oh! They know the drill here on ESPN. And the man of the year is on deck with Gary Miller, waiting to bring you Sports Center. Among the stories they'll have for you, an update on Sterling Sharp's neck injury that has him out for the playoffs and perhaps for his career. All the details of the big trade today. 11 players exchanged between the Padres and Astros. And the Cavs going for 10 straight wins tonight. We'll find out if they earned win number 10 in a row for Coach Mike Fratello. Sports Center is next. <laughs> Sullivan. How about the guy holding the cord, though? The young man holding the cord. Yeah, he got he real money, like didn't he? He, he played money, a few but this guy. How tough do you think that job is? Yeah, you get a court. lot of air time. I think that's a job I could handle yeah, I could, with my yeah. limited skills and abilities. George Welsh, relatively clean. Let's hope he's got on a couple of pair of tube socks. Whoa. I wonder what happened. He had to slip. Well, well, why does he look that bad? Yeah, yeah, he yeah, he hit the deck at some, yeah, some point or another. Face first, apparently. He got knocked down on the sideline by a oncoming or sliding player. Third and one. Up and over for the first down that should put this one safely into the win column for UVA. Charles Way, the ball carrier, to get the first down. That's a smart, but smart guy there. Well, Virginia guy. We mentioned earlier what a fine university it is. As is TCU. 
four of the outstanding institutions in the country. And this is going to be a nine-win year for Virginia. We talked about the players setting that as a goal this season. It'll be only the third UVA team in history to win nine games in a season. Well, let's face it, they were really down after the NC State Hall. And so this is something that they can propel, uh, you know, into the next year. Horn Frogs coming to blitz. And they stack up Charles, Charles Way. The and they use a timeout. Timeout, With a minute 26 remaining, TCU will fight to the finish. Down by 10. And Max Naki will be back next year. You mentioned all the skilled players will be back. Andre Davis is a junior. Coy Woods, the fullback, is a sophomore. The starting receivers, Washington and Brassfield, are sophomore and junior, respectively. The only senior among the group is Jimmy Oliver. Tight end, Brian Collins. First team all-conference is oh, back. Yeah. Well, they lose the guts of that offensive line, but mm -hmm. they've got some kids they, they're pretty high on. You know, Cortez, Towson, backup lineman, uh, Kevin Holmes, Jason Kelly, Clifford Barnes, uh, Ryan Tucker, who is a sophomore. We've played real well for him. So they just got to step it up. They've been recruiting uh, recruiting well. They feel like they've got a shot at some good prospects, some hot prospects in the country. These are exciting times for TCU basketball as well under new coach Billy Tubbs. They went after a big-name coach and landed him. We have been informed that the MVPs of this 19th Hold and Weed Eater Independence Bowl are on offense, Mike Grove, the Virginia quarterback, and on defense, Mike Frederick, the defensive end of UVA. Dan Debenham, our MVP tonight in the mud. Dan. You know, Mike Frederick has had an absolutely fantastic game. He not only enjoys ripping through the opponents, but he also enjoys reading. That's right, the first team all ACC selection is one of several Virginia players that makes up the buddy system at Crozet Elementary School back in Virginia. The players read to and they help counsel assigned little buddies. It's made a big difference for the kids. In fact, the kids have signed a contract with George Welsh as well that says that they will behave and do their homework. <laughs> Frederick has certainly behaved mighty well on the field tonight. He is probably our outstanding player. We've got the contract with America. Now the contract with Welsh. That's and the not a bad deal. Just send some defensive linemen out to schools, and I guarantee you kids will start reading more. How are you going to tell him no? <laughs> George uh, might be victimized by the Gatorade bucket here. Our spies tell us. Boy, on a night like today, this is tough. If there were any underclassmen to hit me with it and it had ice in it, I'd have them run a step for the rest of their lives when they were in school. Clock stop with a minute 20 as they sort out the penalty. It's against TCU. TCU now out of timeouts. With a minute 20 remaining and Virginia leading by 10. So this year will end at 7 and 5 for the Horn Frog. Sports Center next. Second down three at the 44 yard line. Horn Frogs are going to be making some regular trip to bowl game. I guarantee you this program is headed in the right direction. The folks in the Dallas Fort Worth area have caught on. They had an increase in home attendance this year of 11,000 fans per home date. 42% increase over last year. That was the largest increase of any Division I Here's football Kevin program. Brooks. And great area for football. Yes, it is. They're number three in the down. Southwest Conference at home attendance. Man, only A&M and Texas. And they're sticking it out to the end. There are the loyal Horn Frog Time fans. to announce our players of the game this evening on offense. 30 seconds remaining. Virginia, Virginia with this win, will end its four-game bowl losing streak. TCU hasn't been in many bowls lately. This is just its second since 1965. But when they have played in bowls, they haven't fared very well. One, nine, and one now in their last 11. This should be the last play. Carried by Brooks. And here comes the bucket. Will they get to George? Yes, they will. And that's a good one. Final score, Virginia 20, TCU 10. The final score, Virginia 20 and TCU 10. Stay tuned for Sports Center with Gary Miller and Dan Patrick. Sterling Sharp status. The Padres Astros trade and 10 straight for the Cavs, the stories they'll be covering tonight.
now for Rick Walker, Dan Debenham, and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Sean McDonough saying Happy New Year and good night from Shreveport, Louisiana. Thank you.